A very good morning and welcome to Sydney for the 19th annual Blackmore's Running Festival. My name's Ian Cohen and great to have you along for a celebration of athletics that owes its heritage to the Sydney 2000 Olympics and is now sanctioned as a global gold medal event by the IAAF. And the Harbour City has shaken off her winter coat and given us her best spring face. Conditions are superb for today's running, so welcome wherever you're joining us around the planet. We have over 60 nations represented here today. Joining me in commentary, Commonwealth Games gold medalist. He collected the whole set actually with bronze in 86, silver in 1990 and gold in 94. It's a very good morning to Steve Monaghetti. Always a pleasure being here Ian, thanks mate. And also sitting next to him, gold at the Moscow Olympics in the 800, bronze in the 1500, a three-time Olympian for Great Britain, a European champion, a national champion and a world record holder as well. It's a very good morning, Steve Ovetz. Thank you, Ed. Another beautiful day here. Perfect conditions for all the runners. Yeah, it should be absolutely brilliant today. You can see Sydney is an absolute picture. Look at that. They'll be running right around the harbour. Let's have a look at some of our top competitors here and obviously the Africans certainly prominent here the Japanese have won as well. Japanese have been strong here but I think it's a, a Kenyan day. Felix Kipritic has run under 27 on four occasions has a PB of 205 so and Elijah Kemboy coming back defending title I think it'll be a battle between those two. Well the Kenyans have won it 10 times so they've got great form and they've got a great uh, contingent here today so a bit of an African charge certainly could be. We'll have a look at the women's start list for you as well. And again, obviously, we've got uh, Africans that are certainly going to be very prominent. Yeah, um, I think Stella Barsocio, 223 marathon runner. So again, the Kenyans here. Ethiopians have been strong. Like the Ethiopian contingent always in the women's strong, but I reckon it's a Kenyan day. Yeah, Hadji could be there as well. So it's a good, good race for the women as well. So all is in readiness to get underway for the Blackmoors Sydney Running Festival into its 19th year. A wonderful legacy event and the only legacy participation event remaining from the Sydney 2000 Games. Milson's Point is where the event starts. It then heads through the CBD, around through the Sydney Cricket Ground. It turns tail at Centennial Park and winds its way through the beautiful parkland areas before heading back towards town. You can see the halfway mark there. And then it will scale the sides of the harbour area through Darling Harbour and around through Bangaroo Reserve before finishing here in the beautiful forecourt of the Sydney Opera House. That is what is ahead for our competitors. And when we talk about competitors, this event has grown to feature nearly 40 thousand runners how good is that for athletics Steve Monaghetti it's just unbelievable the growth and you know it's normalized now running is just it's not we're not crazy anymore it's just what we expect people to do and terrific and what a what a course and what a view they will get out on course today a little bit warm but by the end but certainly good conditions now they'll be having a, a tremendous experience. A lot of it has grown from the support of Destination New South Wales, through strategic partner Destination New South Wales, the event now with IAAF Gold Status putting the Sydney Marathon alongside London, New York and Boston. And all is in readiness for the start, 42 kilometres ahead for these men and women. Bit of tension at the start line there, the tape just pulled away but you can imagine now they've got uh, 42 kilometres in front of them and it's perfect conditions. The Kenyans are here, they're ready to charge. We could get a record today so that we look forward to the pace on the early part of the uh, the marathon monos what were you normally doing at this time were you a talker or were you very quiet no i didn't i used to be very quiet in my own space i hated chatting just don't don't annoy me just get that gun going so trying to focus a bit so guy zahn from blackmoors will be firing the gun let's talk about some of our top competitors yeah, well, there's, as I said, there's a contingent of, of Kenyans here. There might be a bit of team uh, conversation in Swahili going on during the race, or whether they take it very seriously individually, because it's a big thing for a uh, victory here for these athletes. Um, I'm not sure, Steve. What do you think is going to happen? Oh, very experienced. They'll definitely pack up early, and they'll know each other, and they'll be looking at each other, but they'll just be running along for a little while. So they'll be, they just want to get going, and... Um, I reckon it, we could see. I'm not going to call it early, but I think they're classy enough to be record-breaking uh, runs today. 
So we're on the countdown, guys on from Blackmoors has fired the gun and we are underway for the Blackmoors Sydney Marathon and the elbows are out at this stage, Steve Monaghetti, just to get a little bit of clear pathway. Yeah, you just want to get safely away and hopefully we see some paces there as well, so that'll be a bit of a group, but generally it's, um, you know, you want to just have a clear run at the start, so it doesn't look like anyone's had any trouble there. No, it's quite interesting. Some of the uh, some of the uh, sort of like club runners have rushed to the front of the field there, I think, to get a picture of themselves in front of the Kenyans just before they uh, start getting into the serious part of the race so it's, it's all good fun this is probably the greatest running festival in Australia I think 40,000 runners here today doing all sorts of distances Steve and a record marathon field we should note uh, five and a half thousand in the in the marathon today which is outstanding so yeah there's um, and they do head north for a little bit but then they turn and come over the bridge so you're just really getting this bit under your belt you can see some of the costumes there too because the guinness book of world records has got a four-year partnership but now with the blackmore sydney running festival we've got guys and girls running in kung fu uniforms a tennis player a rugby kid a chef television character highland dancer ballet dancer so you might find some of them on the screen as well Gee, I'd be picking my uniform today, I reckon, just quietly. So you're not the into the French maid, then? You wouldn't be running in that, no. Steve. <laughs> so today, of course, we've got not only the Blackmoors Sydney Marathon, we've got the Blackmoors Half Marathon, the Blackmoors Family Run, which is 3.5 kilometres, and the very popular Blackmoors Bridge Run, which is 10 kilometres as well, as the runners continue to come through the start line. And it'll take a little bit of time to get through the start line, but now the modern innovation is they've got their own timing bands or chips, so they, they, when you cross the line is when your time starts. So each one of these individual runners will get an actual running time, even though it, it might seem like they've uh, missed the start. It will just time them individually, which is um, important. And throughout the day as well, we will see our wheelchair competitors who, of course, have headed off a little bit earlier as well. We've got five wheelchair competitors, so we will be seeing them throughout the day uh, traversing this beautiful course in and around at Sydney Harbour. So uh, the runners just settling into a bit of a routine at the moment. There's Benny St Lawrence out front who is, um, is on pacemaking duties today. So he's, he's and it looks like he's, he's a bit... Quick, he's saying, come on, <laughs> OK, let's get up here. What's going on? Talk to us about that role, Monas, because he's got a specific role today to, to make the pace. Yes, and we, we're probably we're going to talk about that record from 2014, 2-11-18. So he is going... Benny will set the pace, and, set, and now the rest of the runners know that that's the pace that he's going to run. So he's going to go through halfway in about 64.30. You double that, that's 2.09. Gives them a couple of minutes just up their sleeve. You, you, you fatigue, you will get tired at the back end, so that allows a, about a 2.11 pace to be run. I think they're very lucky having a class athlete like Ben St Lawrence taking them through. I mean, he's a real he's a real international athlete himself. I mean, he could run a good marathon on his own without actually helping these guys. So he's out there today doing a really good job of the pace making. He holds, still holds the Australian 10K record, and he, he ran 2.14 up at Gold Coast a couple of months ago. So he's in shape, he's going well, and he's, and he's a local, so he knows the course. Back, back to front, so that will really give them a bit of comfort up the front. Some of the women there, I think that's uh, Basosio just coming through in the blue. I'm not sure we're not seeing their numbers. And just behind, I think Haji there as well. So the women are being literally, I suppose, paced by some of the men which are in the actual race themselves. So they're getting their pacemaking done by the men who are in the main race. There's Ben almost looking over his shoulder now saying, come on, let's keep this going. Look, he's uh, very casual at the moment, Steve. Yeah, I think he's, he's obviously a little bit quicker than... He's telling them to come on, this is the pace, this is what you told me you wanted, so get on, on my back. And there we we have there um, Joseph Aperum Moy, who's on it now, but that's where the pace is, and they're happy. And whilst a pace that will set the, the run, you, you still got to have a race out there, so they're, they're pretty comfortable in I that. I think pack. it's early days in the marathon, and these boys are almost literally warming up in effect in the first sort of 5k or so. They're not going to go too mad, are they? No, and, and there's a big pack there, so they're, they're running pretty. Casual. They're still going. Don't don't get me wrong. They're still running fast pace, but they haven't really got on the back of that um, of Benny just yet. So they're just settling in. So you can see the top of screen there. There's still runners filing through the uh, start line while our elite runners are making their way across the bridge. And you'll see some marvellous pictures wherever you're watching around the globe because this is the only running event in Australia that's broadcast live, and it goes to over 450 million households worldwide. Welcome Eurosport Asia, Fuji 
Fuji TV in Japan, Shanghai TV as well as, of course, uh, Channel 10 in Australia, Fox Sports and also ESPN in North America. So these images are broadcast right around the world and they are brilliant images. Conditions are enormous. And running across the bridge, Steve, do you get time to actually soak a little bit of that in? Well, I did. You know, I ran over there at the Sydney Olympics and you, you, it's such an imposing structure. You actually do. You do have a bit of a look off and uh, cross the harbour. So... It's, it's an unbelievable experience to do that traffic free today. Well, Ben's still doing a great job out there. He's just chugging along, beautiful stride. The Africans are, as you, as you say, Steve, just about 10 metres or so just behind. Apramoy there in the green in the number six, just on his shoulder, but there's no real problem, I don't think, for any of the athletes so far with the pace that Ben's setting. No, and they're just rolling along there. They're quite comfortable. And I think they've settled into the pace. And we've got to remember, Ben will be a bit quicker than the record, so we're not we're not worried. He will, you know, he's on the 2.9. We, we, we're hoping they run sort of 2.10, 2.11 today, so they're all fine. Beautiful vision. We can see the train rolling through as well. The Sydney Harbour Bridge is only shut twice annually, and this shows the sort of kudos that this event has once for this event and once on New Year's Eve. And, of course, New Year's Eve, a massive fireworks display off the Sydney Harbour Bridge. So uh, the bridge is shut, all the traffic going through the tunnel and the foot traffic uh, above. And look at that is... Seriously, is that, that's an unbelievable view what an aspect so why wouldn't you run want to run an event like this that's incredible views over the harbour and of course for all those competitors in the other ones the, the family walk the 10k they also get this advantage they get to come over here and you can see the finish line there in the right of screen that is where these elite athletes and everyone else will finish uh, there is uh, obviously the conservatory which is where the uh, the family run finishes just up behind the opera house but they'll make their way back there they've still got another 39 odd kilometres to go before they get to us here at the Sydney Opera House. And it is also the Australian Marathon Championship, so it's an important race for our Australian marathon runners, men's and women's as well today. And there are the women. Now, I think you'll find that Dion, there in 128, he's actually going to pace the women, but he may win the Australian Marathon title as well, so he's kind of got a couple of things on his mind today. He, that pace and again the women's records uh, is set and held at 228.060 and he, he's very capable, he's got low 220s marathon runners. Yeah that was Bonus Couture there uh, from Kenya, she's a, she's one of the top women, she'd be up there, she's running well, she was in the blue vest just uh, running side by side there with the rest of the men. Ben is really pushing it on here though, I think he's got the bit between his teeth, I think he's been given the job and he's taking it very seriously, he is. Yes. Well, and, and at least they know, so they're still dis just because they're off the pace. That it's only it's only three or four seconds, so it's not long. So they're all fine. It's not it's not like cycling, is it? If you can get behind someone, you get protection from the from the lead guy. In, in running, really, there's not much difference between being him in front and you just about three or four metres behind, Steve. No. I did like it, though, to be sitting on the back of the pacer, to be honest. The beautiful Sydney Harbour Bridge turns 85 as well, sharing a birthday with the naming rights sponsor of the event, Blackmores, who also turns 85. Blackmores was established in 1932. It was a health food store by Morris Blackmore and today the number one vitamin and supplement brand across Australia. The world's tallest steel arch bridge, affectionately known as the Coat Hanger. So a wonderful vista. And, of course, if you're heading to Sydney, make sure you do the bridge climb as well. Those two have started back in 1998. They are very popular and it's an amazing view off the top of the bridge. Well, Aframoy is still up there with Ben. I mean, he's a good runner, really. I mean, he was uh, he was second in the Geneva Marathon last year. Amsterdam, he was 10th before that in 17. So he's a good runner. I mean, this is a class field here and they're not, that, uh, they're not really going to let Ben go too far away, I don't think. They need to use him as best they can. And back to the women's, and, and they're established. A, there's a pretty small pack, really, to be honest, at this early stage. What have we got? Two, four, it's probably six females in that group there. So Just on the outside in the black there, Josephine uh, Chepkowicz, I think, is one of the real big uh, favourites for the race. She's run about 2.25 for the marathon. So that's a class act, it really is. So she's running really well. And at the moment, to say it's early days, as Steve always says, a marathon is not about the start, it's about the finish, and it's true. These are just taking it easy up until now. Yeah, and that's why I'm not concerned about this pace up the front. Benny's on it, that's fine. If I was Joseph, I'd be back in the pack. I wouldn't be in a hurry to be um, 
No, he's not, so he's not getting in much benefit from Ben. In fact, he's running his own sort of pace at the front there. So, yeah, yeah but he, you know, everybody to his own uh, way of doing things. And uh, if that's what he likes doing, then fine. Then uh, that's the way he runs. No one's won a marathon going off at the front. So <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll pack up and um, just keep him in eyesight. But, um, and you know, they know what pace is run. So they're, they're very experienced. These people, they, they, they run marathons all around the world. So we're not... They're not doing anything we wouldn't expect. They're very comfortable in that group. So you can see them making their way. Uh, four kilometres down at the moment, and they will have now got off the bridge and will be working their way all the way through towards Centennial Park, which is the turning point where they'll then make their way back in towards town as well. A little bit of a gap opening up here. Not a problem, they do a bit of a turn, so no issues there. So the wheelchair athletes, of course, a big part of the Blackmoors Sydney Running Festival as well, and we can see some of them here, Christy Dawes, we've also got Eliza Alt-Connell, uh, Richard Coleman, Dennis Devereaux, and also Jake Lappin as well. So this is a start earlier, they're out ahead of our runners uh, at the moment. Gun is fired, and underway they go. 42 kilometres. And Dennis Devereaux is an amazing story. He actually was involved in a fall where he broke both tibias in his legs. And although he can walk, he's chosen to compete in racing the wheelchair. This is his first marathon in a wheelchair. Richard Coleman, of course, we know very well. Jake Lappin, as well as uh, Eliza and also Christy. So they're off, and uh, just looking at the equipment they, they've got here, fantastic, really, carbon fibre wheels, you know, uh, all the sort of accoutrements that you expect from the Tour de France cyclists. So they're in great shape, and they've gone off really fast. Look at them. You're watching the Blackmoors Sydney Running Festival. So, wonderful scenes, the sunrise spectacular over Sydney Harbour. And most of the elite runners have now made their way across the bridge. And uh, Steve Ovet, it's uh, a wonderful opportunity for the uh, the weekend warriors to be able to get across this bridge as well. Oh, as I said, this is, this is a really significant running festival here. Probably the best running festival in the whole of Australia. Probably one of the best in the world, to be absolutely honest. 40,000 athletes will be taking part all sorts of distances this is the marathon we know this is the elite runners but there's also the half marathon and there's the the, the, the the walk across the bridge where the families the push prams and mums and dads can go out so this is a real occasion and the weather again absolutely beautiful here perfect running conditions so bornis couture out in front wearing the number 14 and we'll also pick up a couple of other runners for you as well you can see a mixture of some of the locals along with African visitors and also Japanese runners as well and spectacular scenes here in oh, Sydney. This has got to be one of the, 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 the probably the significant marathons in the world. I mean, you can think of others, it'd be London, Paris, Berlin. I mean, but when you come to something like this, I mean, not only is it a significant marathon, but the course is superb, Steve. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, they, they go through all sorts of areas, you know, through the parks, they come over the bridge, they finish at the Opera House. Yeah. I mean, you, know, you don't get any better than that, really. No, and you will, you obviously run if you're looking around and enjoying the course, that's going to make you a bit more comfortable. But it, it has a couple of rolling hills. It's not the flattest and fastest marathon in the world, but it's um, they've ran fast here, so there must that, be that some really downhills as but well. But that really only affects the elite athletes. That's the rest right, yeah. of the other runners, I mean, to have all that, all the all the other sights and sort of sounds that they get running in this marathon, it's fantastic. Yes, and they'll get good support. I think it goes through a lot of uh, residential areas as well, so there'll be people out on the course, and that's significant as well. If you can get some family and friends out there giving you a bit of support, that makes a difference. Carlo Expressway and then down across Observatory Hill, obviously. Hyde Park is where they're heading to as well. And you can see the edge of Observatory Hill and across through to, uh, to Hyde Park, which is a beautiful, beautiful flat land to be able to run. Um, the hills around these parts aren't too taxing, Steve, but they, they obviously make you work hard enough. Yeah, and some people like the, the, the undulations. They like to mix it up a little bit, so it breaks that sort of repetition of being um, on the same muscles all the time. So, yeah, it provides a bit of variety sometimes as well. 
So they're just packing up a little bit here next to Ben. So Ben's doing a great job. Most of the Africans now have just pulled their way back to it. And Bondi is one of the world's most famous beaches. Golden sands, deep blue crystal clear ocean and perfect waves for surfing and swimming, creating the ideal beach spot. I wonder if anyone's going to head there for a little bit of rehab. Maybe the old uh, saltwater rehab might be happening at uh, Bondi Beach uh, this afternoon. Yeah, and why wouldn't you after a, a, a marathon? Nothing better than in a bit of open water to help the recovery. I think I'd probably want to be lying down for about four hours yeah. before I hit that, but <laughs> I'm sure there's some that will make their way over to Bondi. Why not? But, uh, yeah, it's a long way marathon, 42 kilometres, and I must admit, it does take a toll on your legs. It really does. So Apramoy is the man in the Blackmoors singlet, just running with our pace setter. The real star is number four there. You just saw him just about a tiny man, Elijah Kemboy there. You know, he, he's a, a real good class runner and he's just chugging along looking very, very comfortable. He won last year, Steve, so he'll be on to yep. the, the... He knows the course well and he'll be rolling along. Having had a victory, that always gives you a lot of confidence leading in. So at the 4.7 kilometre mark, and you just saw some shots there of Hyde Park, which they'll be heading to very shortly they'll make their way through Hyde Park it's a, about a 1, thousand fifteen hundred meters as they make their way through Hyde Park and then of course on the return as well well there's some of the feeding stations already set up for the other athletes coming up to the 5k mark we'll just get a, a, a quick inkling of what sort of speed they're running at Ben just taking a quick drink here at the, at the feeding stations starting to split up a little bit the uh, main pack now that group of about uh, what is it seven or so just looking very comfortable though. And let's locate, so Kip Karui, the taller yep. Kenyan on the right of screen, number two, and then number one, Felix Kipritich, who is the person who has those four sub two seven. So yeah. keep an eye on those two. They're probably the, uh, you know, I think they're the ones who are going to give Elijah Kemboy a, a run for his money. They're probably the two that I would pick as the Yeah, the two. I, I would say they were. I came down to the lift with uh, Kip Karui, Kip Karui, six foot five. I mean, he's a big man for a marathon run. He is, yes. Yeah. Is that an advantage to have the longer levers, Steve? <laughs> no. Or is it, is it actually a disadvantage because you've got, obviously, he's going to be physically bigger and maybe carrying a little bit more weight? Yeah, that's the, the weight, and you've got to carry that over such a long distance. You want to be as efficient as you can. And we're getting the 5K split there at just over 15.45, so... That's 3.09 pace, though. They're about right on record pace, but it's early, so I'd like them to be a little bit quicker, and that's why Ben St. Lawrence was keen for them to go a little bit faster, but they are on right on that record pace, but you want to have a little bit of time up your sleeve, but with this course switching around a little bit, that's OK. So the CBD and tower area around Sydney, and it is turning on a beautiful, beautiful spring day for the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. As I said, there's a number of events right across here. We've already seen some of our wheelchair athletes get underway. We've got family walks, we've got the 10Ks, and we've also got the half marathon as well. As they make their way through Hyde Park, the oldest parkland in Australia, right in the heart of the CBD. You can see the Archibald Felton, the uh, Pool of Reflection, and the Anzac Memorial in there as well. Famous for magnificent fig tree lined avenues and contains more than 580 exotic and native trees. Trees. Not that any of these boys and girls are going to be noticing too much of that, but uh, look, a fantastic vista for them to be running through and a nice surface as well. Well, one of the good things when, when Steve mentioned the pace is slightly sort of eased a little bit, you can see Ben, Ben St. Lawrence thought, yes, we've got to keep it up a bit now. And he picked it up a bit, Steve, didn't he? And just decided to put a bit of a surge on, stretched him out yet again. He has, yes. The half marathon, as I said, is also underway. And again, Milson's Point is the starting venue beautifully across the coast. Hanger, and then they'll work their way through Hyde Park, which we've just seen on the screens before heading through Barangaroo Reserve, through Darling Harbour, and they will also finish here at the forecourt of the Sydney Opera House. So that is the map for the Blackmoors Half Marathon with the finish, and we'll see some of the runners uh, getting underway here. And this is just a great entry point, isn't it, for a lot of people that are wanting to maybe run a marathon? Who knows? Could be an opportunity start with your half marathon. 
perfect lead-in. I used to call it the normal person's marathon. You don't quite have to put your life on hold and do the mileage that you would need for a marathon. So and if you're stepping up, you, you run a 10K and you might want the challenge, new challenge, then the half marathon's the ideal race. So underway in the half marathon, the 21 kilometres. And I felt you used to be able to race the half marathon. The marathon, you need to spread your energy out, your glycogen levels over the whole event, whereas the half marathon, you can actually, it's more, you know, you can run hard and feel like you're at pace for most of the event. Massive numbers, gee, huge crowd. So the half marathon's a very popular event now. as we go back to Hyde Park. That might be the chase group, I think, so. Well, masses now coming around the, uh, the fountain there. Beautiful scenes. Oh, everybody doing their own thing here. And as you see, the, some of the uh, paces have got the, the stickers up. So our half marathon was taken out by Ryoti Komori of Japan. 64.54 was the time. And then the first lady across the line, Belinda Martin at 45 years of age, 1.14.53. Right down here at the finish line with winner of the men's half marathon, Komori Ryota. How was that for you today? Yes, I did well. I'm very happy that I won. And a convincing win. How are the conditions like on the course? Yes, it was um, up down, up down courses, but uh, it was very hard. Thank you. Well, well done. Congratulations and recover well. We hope to see you again next year. Thank you. I would like to come back here next year. I'm with the winner of the female half marathon down here at the finish line, Belinda Martin. It's your second year winning this in a row and a touch faster, a minute faster, in fact. Yeah, this one was a minute faster than last year. Last year was quite windy. Do you remember how windy it was? So I think maybe that might have helped me. Yeah, and so how did you feel out there on the course? I felt really good today, which um, going through the first 5K, I felt nice and relaxed. I think it was 17 and a half. So on that time, I thought, oh, I'm in for a decent time. You're a hero. You're 45 years old. You're still running PBs. You're still absolutely smashing it. What, what's next? How, how long can you go? Um, I think, you know, you've, age is nothing really. So being 45, I guess, if you, if you feel strong in yourself, you can keep on going forever. So, yeah, to all the oldies out there, just give it a go. Well done. Congratulations. We hope to see you back here next year for a three-peat. OK, thank you, Eloise, and you might be here too. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. So the half marathon, and uh, what a result, 45 years of age, Belinda Martin, mum of two, and as I always said, uh, just absolutely brilliant to have her posting PBs. And her daughter's running very well as well, so there'd be a bit of family rivalry happening there. My well, son's running today in the 10K and holding him off for another year or so, hopefully. <laughs> they close you down. Age, you can't, you can't stop it, unfortunately. But great, Belinda Mark, 45. She's uh, she's going great. So enthusiastic. As well. well, we're seeing the women now starting to group up, aren't we, in the women's race? So that's good. Just ticking along nicely there. There's the uh, just coming up to 7k almost, 23 minutes 55. So they're yeah, moving along nicely. This is Dion, who I think's helping out the women as well as running his own race. But they're they're rolling along. Pretty well, we're hearing out on course that they're um, under record pace, so women are going well. And so is Ben St. Lawrence. He's really taking his job, as I said earlier, very seriously. Ben, he's out there working hard, making the other athletes really realise that this is the pace they should be running if they want to get close to the record. And it's almost been like this from the start, Steve, hasn't it, really? This sort of format. Ben up front there, and then the other athletes about 10 or so metres just behind. Yeah, and it suggests that, you know, they're... They're comfortable in that. I think they realise that that pace that he's setting is just 
They know it's there. They're happy to just let him sit off the front. He's, That's fine. He's going to run at, what, 64, 65 for the first half. Is that hard for him on his own out there? Um, he's a pretty experienced half marathon runner, so he'll be on it. He, he looks very comfortable, so I think he's fine. I think he's going well. So the Sydney cricket ground and some of the beautiful precincts around that area before they head to Centennial Park. Keeps looking at his watch, so he's very conscious of that pace and time. So that's with technology now, you know, he'll be able to get a running pace, so he knows he's on on that sub three minutes, 10 second per kilometre. Deceptive actually, looking at with, with, a, with a motorbike obviously coming with the pace. You don't really realise how fast he's running. He's running pretty fast at the moment. See some of our female competitors there. Couture just looking very comfortable at the front of that group, so she's looking good. And there are so many opportunities to explore the Sydney coastline from boat cruises, there's fishing, whale watching, jet boating and kayaking, to walking and cycling the promenades or surfing at one of Sydney's famous beaches. The Sydney Harbour experience, certainly one to behold. You can see the Sydney cricket ground there. Cricket has been played there for 160 years. And in 1894, it was officially named as the Sydney cricket ground. And they'll be heading towards Centennial Park as we rejoin our leaders. Conditions wonderful for the Blackmoors Sydney Running Festival and Blackmoors course have been wonderful sponsors of this event celebrating a 16th year association as naming sponsorship and their ambassador Carrie Bickmore is running the 10k out on course today and Monas I know your son Matthew's also running the 10k as well great entry point for a lot of athletes it is and we should thank Blackmores we wouldn't be here without them we can't have events without our sponsors and this is a beautiful city to run around, but uh, you know there's a lot of road closures and issues. So we, we really thank the um, supporters of this event to allow us to indulge and get out there and do what we we can do, and and they're doing it, doing the business today. Certainly the women. I think the women's pack seems to be uh, more compact and rolling along. I, I think we're in for a, a really fast day. Um, certainly in the women. I mean that 228 record is definitely going to be under enormous pressure today. I think we've got some class women, 223, 225 marathon runners here. So that 228 run and, and Macd is in the race. So the record holder is in the race as well, just sitting back there in about um, third place in the women's race. So she's on the pace as well. Bit of a tight turn there for the athletes to just go around that bollard. And you know, they're probably not too tight at the moment to worry about that sort of thing. but. The course, I think, is, is from my point of view, I mean, obviously I'm not a marathon runner, Steve, but when you've got the, the turns and the twists, that must affect you if you're getting tired. But also, at the same time, not seeing a long road stretched out in front of you, psychologically, it must be, must be good to have something breaking that up all it, the time. Yeah, definitely. And as long as you're comfortable with it, the turns, you never want to turn because it just breaks your rhythm up a bit. But like you say, it does... It does. You don't want to be running on a straight road either, because you, you tend to just think, "Oh, wow, we're getting closer," and you know you get sort of caught mentally then. So, but you want to you want to be able to retain your rhythm so that you're not wasting any energy by having to turn and get back up to um, pace again. Joseph Apramoy is the man in the number six there, and that Blackmore singlet, the famous uh, colours of the Blackmore singlet, over 10,000 competitors today will be uh, will be uh, running in that singlet as well. Reedy's joined us, and we're going to find out a little bit more about some of the sustainability in today's events. Hi, I'm Reedy from the TV show Bondi Rescue. As a lifeguard, I've seen firsthand the impact that non-recyclable products and single-use plastic has on the environment. Basically, this year at the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival, we're doing everything we can to minimise our impact on the environment. So, we're using biodegradable cups instead of plastic cups. We're working with the crew at Hoz Harvest to make sure that no food goes to waste. And we've also teamed up with the crew at Just Water. These bottles are completely recyclable and you'll get one when you cross the finish line. Make sure you pop it in a recycle bin and I'll see you at the finish line.
Thanks very much, Reedy. Great to have him on board. And, of course, Eloise Wellings as well, who represented her country in 06, 2010 and 2014 Commonwealth Games and also the 2012 and 16 Olympics. And uh, a couple of years ago made the finals of the 5,000 and 10,000 metres at Rio. So great to have it. Eloise Wellings on board the broadcast. Indeed, Alzi. She's, she's a champ. Been around on the running scene, dominated Australian distance running for a number of years. Sydney Cricket Ground, certainly a picture at the moment. And uh, Australia's been doing reasonably well against the old <laughs> enemy, the English. You were waiting for us to bring that up, weren't you, Steve? Oh, yeah, yeah, I was waiting for the, the, the dagger in my back there, and it didn't take long to, to, to arrive, did it, really? But yes, yes, OK, yeah. Well, you're, you're living in Australia now. Surely you have some sort of um, feeling <laughs> I like for us. To, I like to sit on the fence. I really do. It's a bit sore, but I like to sit on there for a long time. Is that a barbed wire fence or a normal <laughs> fence? A white picket fence, hopefully, like the cricketing grounds. Welcome to Splinters over there. <laughs> joining us this morning for the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival as well. And you can see the ladies' group here that will be forming up, wearing 14... Bones Couture from Kenya, the 32-year-old. So she's actually uh, one of the oldest women in the field today. And uh, he's looking, has run so far at 2.24.19 in terms of PBs. Do you think she can get the job done today? No, oh, there's a few there that could do it. I mean, uh, this group hasn't splintered up yet. Masocio's there. Uh, do you say Couture's there? You know... Uh... I don't know. I mean, at the moment, it's not really sort of proving too much. I don't think it's too early, really, to see who's going to go for the record. If if they are going to go for the record, it is a race. Let's, forget, let's not forget that. Yeah. It's about winning as well. Let's not get too carried away with records. So we'll have to wait and see what the actual pace is. Around about the halfway mark, I think. We'll get an idea then. But they're they're running right, and they look like they're rolling. I think the men are sitting off the pace a bit, but the women are, are very aggressive and, and on pace. So that's look out. That's that's they're doing the business for sure. And I think Stella Barsocio, just off the, that group, is the one sitting nicely in that pack and Vaughan Escatur is pushing it along. And if you're just joining us, the man in white is setting the pace. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that, Monas, and Steve Ovet as to what that role means for Ben St. Lawrence. It's a designated role, and it's one he's certainly been leading from the front at the moment. apramoy has been keeping him company, but uh, Ben St. Lawrence with a, with a job to do today. And he, what he, he's designated role is to set the pace everybody's aware of what pace he will run so he's going through halfway in 64 30 and then he can he'll keep going if he's feeling okay he might get them to 25 or 30 but he he's not likely to finish he won't finish but they know they don't have to worry about the pace so they know what it is they can sit off that pace if it was windy they might be in behind him getting a bit of cover but generally it's to set an established pace so everybody knows that that's the pace. And they don't, they're not going to get cagey and, and sit back. They know, OK, let's get this pace rolling. We want to win the race, but we also want to run a fast time and get that course record. There's bonuses, financial bonuses for the course record. And it is a gold label marathon event. So, you know, it's a highly established race that you want to win. So as they make their way through Centennial Park, home to more than 15,000 trees, beautiful flower beds, manicured lawns, duck ponds, statues and cafes. Certainly a stunning part of the city that Sydney siders have enjoyed for over 100 years. You're watching the Blackmores Sydney Running Festival. Oh, they're still running. Apramoy, though, it's, uh, doesn't really like it, I don't think, Ben being in front of him too much. Some of the Kenyans don't like that at all, do they? they? They almost take it as a bit of an insult if someone's in front of them in a race. So he's getting out there and he's actually doing more of a pacemaking job than Ben is at the moment. He is. And we're certainly seeing that as well in the women's. I mean, Dion's on the pace, but aggressively out in front. Chachisa now just moving ahead, deciding that the pace maybe isn't quite what she wants and yes. uh, pushing on. I'm surprised because I'm thinking they're ahead of pace, but anyway, she's, she's keen to get it wrongly. So, of course, the international runners here have been descending on this event for quite a while. We've had Japanese winners, we've had a lot of the African winners, we've had some local winners as well, but the Japanese really look at it 
um, and we'll talk more about it, but obviously with the Olympic Games looming as well in 2020, they'll be wanting to uh, appear at their own home games if possible, and these sort of events obviously help with the lead up there. Yeah, and the time difference not bad from Asia, so a couple of hours, and that's why I think the Japanese men and women have run very well here. They don't have to get over that jet lag and acclimatise, so I think that's um, been a real advantage. We'll see how they go today. I think the yeah, I think the Kenyans and the Africans today look more prominent. We're seeing that early on. Oh, they, there's the splits for the uh, kilometres, 326, Steve. So they're they're clicking ahead. Yeah, that is that's that's what they need to be running. That's under uh, the record pace for the women, which we're sensing that is happening. Whereas the men are probably just on pace at best. Ben doing a great job. Still looks very comfortable. Just uh, doing what he has to do. A beautiful park, Centennial Park. It's um, one of the world's great parks, and they'll be enjoying run up, rolling through there. It's a very uh, popular place for exercising here in Sydney. So. 360 hectares. It's an extraordinary amount of space, isn't it? Right in the CBD, basically. Massive park, really, for the centre of a city. But that just goes to show the sort of areas that they're running around here. Beautiful areas for this marathon a lot of recreational venues as well in Centennial Park. We've seen the Sydney Cricket Ground. There's a number of other cricket grounds, of course, and uh, athletics, uh, a lot of running around Centennial Park, and uh, you see all sorts of sports that are a part of here. They had a World Cross Country trial in Centennial Park, in fact, in the 80s. So it's very well utilised, as it should be. A fantastic place to run. Joseph Apramoy is the man in the green singlet, and Ben St. Lawrence in the white. Sydney's beautiful coastline features a series of outdoor pools offering a unique swimming experience. Saltwater pools, perfect if you're a lap swimmer, a toddler, or those who just want to relax. Bondi baths, of course, for over 100 years, a famous landmark as well. And on a day like today, a beautiful Sunday here in Sydney, they will be very well frequented, you would suggest. The leaders currently making their way through Centennial Park. You can ride a horse, ride a bike, you can picnic, you can play sports, exercise, do a whole lot of things. 360 hectares right on the doorstep of the CBD Centennial Park. Ben St Lawrence in the white is our uh, pacer for today and it is the man in green, Joseph Apramoy, who has been riding his shoulder most of the way and that gap that we've got of what looks to be about 20 metres back to uh, the chasing group at the moment. That's been fairly consistent since about the first kilometre. It has, and they're all the, all the as expected, all the favourites in the men's event are in that in that group. So they're just sitting off the back of Ben and, and Joseph and happily running along, along, and we think they're just slightly ahead of race record pace, about 2.11. So they're rolling along nicely. And the women are, are definitely going at, uh, quicker than race record pace. So don't be under any illusions. They're moving very well here. So wearing the 14, 28-year-old from Bahrain, Chelchissa. And she's uh, moved through to the front. Uh, sorry, Katur is in 14. Chelchissa not far behind in the 13 as well. And Stella Barsocio there who I think it's the, the favourite to uh, take out the women's race just there in number 12. You, you see from the front on shot. Yeah, she's looking really, really comfortable. Beautiful, smooth mover. 223 marathon run. I mean, that's a class act. That seriously is. So it's, when you said earlier that these women are running at, at faster than the, we've had before in previous races, it's because the calibre of, of athletes here now are so much better than in the past. Yeah, they're, starting to, they're starting to accept that this is a serious marathon to get some good times in. That's right. And again, they'll look at the record and it's 2.28 and these are 2.23, 2.24 runners. They'll be saying, well, we can run that. 
any day of the week. So for them, this is wrong. This is not unexpected. This is a normal race for them. And we've seen a lot of the Australians as well because the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival actually hosts the Australian Marathon Championships. Of course, optimal forward planning for athletes and coaches preparing to take on the world at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. And Athletics Australia, the proud owner of the Blackmore's Sydney Running Festival. So uh, terrific, obviously, to uh, have that as a big part of it. And what a great opportunity for them to be able to uh, run at this stage. We won't get the best of the Australian Marathon runners because they'll, they'll be heading up to Doha for the World Championships in a few weeks, but certainly we'd love to see someone come out of this event and make the, the marathon team in the men's and women's, and certainly even just as a stepping stone. Blackmores are fantastic supporters. The interim managing director for Blackmores Australia and New Zealand is Eric Jean Mayer, and he explains why Blackmores support the event. So 2019 marks the 16 year that Blackmores is uh, sponsoring the Blackmores Sydney Running Festival. Since we started, people have raised more than $20 million to give back to the community. And for this year only, we're targeting to raise more than $2 million, which is fantastic. Blackmores is passionate about supporting the people on their journey to well-being. So encouraging everyone to have activity, uh, to have a sort of physical activity, just to look after the body. You have only one body and you need to look after it. This year, close to 40,000 people from all around the world are joining us for this great event and we, we're very proud and happy to be part of it. Terrific support, and the Blackmore Sydney Running Festivals raised more than $21 million for Australian charities since its inception. This year, the Leukaemia Foundation and Beyond Blue are the headline charities, and more than 100 other official charities are supported by people taking part in this event. When we say people taking part, it's grown to nearly 40,000 runners on a Sunday morning in Sydney, just basking in the sunlight. And you say it quickly. Ian, but 21 million, that's fantastic. And that's one of the things that these mass participation marathons around the world has been able to bring. And people will run because of an, an emotional reason. And it's quite an emotional event to run the marathon. So, you know, not only are they raising big money and awareness, it's, you know, it's a personal challenge. So good on the, the people who are out there doing it for a charity today. Well, as you say, 2 million, just, just in this event, this year, two million towards charity. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money for one day's event, isn't it really? So fantastic achievement by everybody out there, not just in the marathon, but in all the other events here today. When we talk about growing the event, Pond 3, of course, have been a massive part of that. They've grown participation from about 12 or 13,000 to nearly 40,000, making the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival the largest running festival in Australia and one of only two IAAF gold label marathons in the country. So well done to Pond 3. Oh, terrific performance from, from the organisation because we see the end result. We see the runners, we see the you know the, the, the effort that's going in for the runs, but what you don't see is the massive amount of, of preparation for an event like this. It's from everybody, 12, the communities. The, uh, sorry, 12 the, months. I mean, they'll be planning next year's tomorrow. Yeah. That's how it works. The volunteers, the everything. Team. We just saw them take a bit of a drink there. Can you believe it? 80,000 biodegradable cups of electrolyte will be consumed. So thinking about the environment, but also thinking about the athletes that need to sustain that hydration. And it will get a little bit warm by the end of today. We're looking at temperatures of the mid-20s. So if you, you know, you're know you thinking five-hour, six-hour marathon runners, are, and they'll need to certainly look after their hydration along the way. So you need those fluids. And whilst the cups are biodegradable our bodies aren't so we want to make sure we, we get everyone through this event safely well ben's pushing it on again he sensed i think that the pace has dropped a little bit there apramoy just dropping off from his usual shoulder to shoulder with ben um dropping back there about uh, what six or so meters just behind him and then another gap again of about uh, 10 meters or so for that group of elite athletes just behind him and back to our women and we are here at our, our stats man Dean's letting us know that the, the women are ahead of race record as we're picking, but the men are close to race record. And obviously, Benny, Benny Saints wanting to get them a little bit ahead of that. So his two-hour nine pace is uh, a bit quicker than they're running at the moment. But the women here are right on. And Bornis Kadera has been very aggressive in this group. And uh, there's Barsocio as well. So 
good field of women here, so we've got a real race here as well. And they've got their men to help them there, obviously, as well, just chugging along nicely. There's a good group. I think you get into that sort of almost uh, group sort of mentality when you're in that race, don't you, really, Steve? I think, you know, that it's, it's you're running together, you're comfortable, no one's really suffering at this stage. No, no. I would be sitting in behind Dion, but they're, they've got their own race, and it's, it's unusual. There's really only two men and the four women there who are pushing the pace along, and this is fast running, so... We're seeing a very aggressive race pretty early on here in the women's. So the area they're travelling through at the moment is Centennial Park, a stunning part of the city. Historically important as the birthplace of the nation as well. You might see one of the dome buildings we go past. That was the site of Federation for Australia. So nearly 130 years Centennial Park has been a big part of the Sydney CBD and... Uh, perfect vantage point maybe if you're just enjoying a little bit of light breakfast or uh, maybe a bit of brunch uh, you can head out there and of course see some of the uh, world's elite runners going past your front door that's a drink station that's a coffee drink station that one in there i think <laughs> <laughs> look at that views beautiful through centennial park and, and they wind around in here they use the park very well now to get some extra distance rather than heading out and you talk about the you know the history of this event and you know it's a it's a follow-on from the sydney olympics and it's great to see that that legacy has been able to not just a legacy it's alive we're seeing you know so many people out on the road today as a result you talk about legacy but here we have people they're speaking with their feet you know that are doing it today now ben st lawrence work might be done here at almost the 15 kilometer mark uh, steve monaghetti well that's interesting yeah I reckon he might be making a conscious decision. He's saying, come on, look, I've only got... I reckon he's there. For, he'll get through halfway. So he'll, he'll keep going, I think. And he's probably saying, look, we're dropping off the pace a bit here. I'm coming back to let you know, if you want to get the record today, I'm only going to be here for another six or seven kilometres. Use me while you can, but you need to get up on pace. And I think he's probably just letting them know that they're, they're just on record pace rather than being ahead of it, which he'd like to be. Akra Moy, though, I don't think he's really too worried about Ben St. Lawrence. He's been virtually taking up the lead himself from the word go. And he's uh, an athlete of class athlete, really. And if he keeps this going, I don't know, maybe he decided this is his day. But as you say, it's early days in the marathon. You're always telling me that. And uh, if he's just doing it now, then maybe he's taking the pace for the other Africans. Maybe they've decided to use him as a bit of a pacemaker too. Yeah, I, I think he's probably, you know, pushing the pace a little bit quicker than he needs to at this stage. He's a 2.8 marathon runner, but he's got a couple of two, five, two, six guys behind him. So I'd be in the pack if I was him. But good that, to see that he's taking it up and trying to keep it rolling. A 2.08.26 is the PB for Joseph Apramoy, the... 29-year-old from Kenya. You never know with the Kenyans, though, Steve. I mean, they, they could they could have some sort of like organisation of who goes where and what to do. They do that, and then at the end of the day, if there's prize money, they split it up between themselves. That's the way they work. It's a team effort sometimes. That doesn't look like a team effort to me. I mean, he's out <laughs> running hard by himself. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's doing really well. He's pushing on. He really is. We're at the 15K mark of the Blackmoors Sydney Running Festival. Well, the gap's opening up. Aprimoy's pushing on, and Ben is, as you said, he's still carrying on. He's not, he's not dropping off at that 15-kilometre point for the pace. He's decided, you said, to do his job, go to the half. Yeah, I think he's just trying to encourage that second group to get on pace, and you know, he, he's got a job to do, and he wants to deliver, and he's realising that uh, the pace is, you know, they're letting him go. I mean, it's so always, easy, it's always easy for us to say that they, you know, they're going to go for the record, but maybe men mentally they're thinking, no, I want to win this race. Maybe that group behind is thinking, no, there's too many good athletes here. I don't want to push too hard. I want to race. I want yeah. to race them. And they're still on. They actually are on record pace, so they'll come home quicker in the second half when it gets into the serious end of the business. So I'm not, I'm not as worried about them not being on the pace just yet. But um, this course, you know, can 
roll a bit in the second. I think it's a hard course to, to negative split, so I would like them to be a little bit ahead. As we're seeing with the women, you know, they're a couple of minutes, well, well and truly, if they're on 224 pace, they're three or four minutes ahead of race record. So they're going well, and, and they've got a nice established pack here. So you know, that's, where you, that's what you'd want with the men, but um, we're not quite seeing that at the moment. There's a great aerial shot of Centennial Park. Look at that. That is a magnificent part to have so close to the CBD. It really is on top of the CBD. And it gives them a great, uh, well, I suppose, middle part of the race to run through. Um, beautiful part. Yeah, it just ticks off a few kilometres in nice, beautiful area. It's flat in there. You get a little bit of um, cooling breeze off the, the little ponds in there as well. So this is a beautiful area to be running. And you're seeing there the shadows. So. The sun is out, which you know I also think may be a reason that they're just sitting back because it might get a little bit warm in the second half of this race. Well, that's a that's a that's getting to be a serious break now. But yeah, you know. well, Akramoy really is pushing it on. Ben is not letting him go though, so Ben really isn't concentrating on the group behind to lead them through. He's thinking, well. This is the race pace that we need to go for a record. Yeah, he's, so he's in between. He's, he's actually having a bit of trouble because he's thinking, do I yeah, keep running exactly. on pace with Joseph or do I go back where the race is? And help them out. And help them yeah. out. So <laughs> he, he's betwixt and between. But he's doing a great job, but it, it's harder than I'm sure he thought it was going to be. Well, suffering there at the back, just dropping off there. That's Kip Karui, so that's a surprise. And our finish line is going to be the Sydney Opera House, an international icon joining Hyde Park Barracks, Cockatoo Island and the old Great North Road in representing outstanding universal values of world heritage listing. That listing, that is where our finish line will be for the Blackmoors Sydney Running Festival. And uh, not only the 10K, but also the half marathon and also the marathon as well. So they're making their way through Centennial Park at the moment. Centennial Park, just a wonderful, wonderful urban location on the uh, doorstep of the CBD and wonderful greenery that the Sydney siders and international visitors alike can enjoy when they head into Sydney town. Well, as Steve said, though, it is starting to warm up a bit now. Um, temperatures creeping up from the early morning start for the marathon runners, but uh, they've got to watch out. I think we, we might be seeing... Um... I think that's that chasing pack might be starting to get into their work. Oh, there's, oh the, there's there we go. Now that's a surprise, Steve. Uh, that's Kip Karui. Yeah, mm. he looks like he's suffering from cramp, or he didn't just slow down. He literally just stopped. So he's suffering there, maybe from the back by the looks of it. Yeah. So, so Kip so Karui, the 34-year-old Kenyan who you gentlemen nominated as a genuine chance today. Looks like he might be having cramp potentially calf, or is he reaching around to the top of the hamstring there potentially, yeah, Monas? It's just not his day, you no. know. It doesn't matter. Sometimes you 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 say you've got some. He's just it's not his day today, so he's probably got a bit of cramp, or maybe he had an issue coming in we didn't know about, and yeah. it looks like it's pulled him up pretty early on. So he got towards the 15, 16 k mark, but has. Stopped in Centennial Park, certainly at the moment. The man that's been out in front for most of the day in the Blackmoors Green singlet is Joseph Abramoy, the 29-year-old from Kenya. Benson Lawrence, we know in the white, has been doing the pace setting and dropped back at one stage, but has now obviously got back onto uh, what would be record pace. Abramoy, I don't know what he's doing out there in front there. I mean, he's not using Benson Lawrence at all to help him through. He's just uh, keeping almost two or three metres in front of Ben. There he is, look, just chugging away. Maybe this is the way he likes to run. I don't know. I mean, uh, as Steve said earlier, it would be nice if he just tucked in and used Ben, but he doesn't seem to want to do that. I mean, maybe this is the way that he runs normally in marathon races, and, uh, well, if that's the case, he's doing just what he wants to do. Yeah, and, uh, you know, still a long way to go. They're only 17 kilometres into this 42-kilometre race. So, And he looks like he's running almost like a track running yeah. or a, a shorter road race. He, he's really rolling. So, you know, it's not an efficient look running no, it's not. so I, I think he's probably slightly more aggressive than 
than I would want. But um, the funny anyway. thing is, though, that you're watching Benson Lawrence doesn't give him anything, does he? Doesn't doesn't look across and say slow down. No. I'm I'm here to help you. He, he just lets him do his own thing, and Ben just does what he's been told to do, which is I think take him through the first half in a reasonable pace, 65, 64, that sort of rhythm. Yeah. So, of course, there is a number of events that take place on this beautiful Sunday morning, and one of the most popular is the Blackmoors 10-kilometre bridge run. And again, the start from Milson's Point, and we've got record entries in this one as well. The bridge run, 16,000 competitors, the 10K. I know it's a very, very popular. As, uh, as I said, Mona's son, uh, Matthew, is running it. Also, family connections for me running in it as well with my wife Bronwyn but uh, the finish at Sydney Opera House and about to get underway in the 10 kilometre the bridge run and this is a terrific terrific initiative and one that really makes the whole thing very very accessible because some people say I reckon I can do 10 k's miles well, you, you, yes it's very popular and over 16,000 so this is the biggest numbers event today in 10k and people will have their personal best so they'll be looking to run faster than that or as close to that as they can on a perfect day to, like today yeah they've all got their watches just about to click their watches at the start so blackmore's officials getting it underway and you can see the blue sky in the background the 10k is underway and you can see them heading out and again it's a matter of getting a little bit of oxygen and free space to be able to swing the arms and get into a bit of rhythm. I hope my son's in there. I didn't see him, but <laughs> he's there somewhere. Hopefully. I saw him. I saw him. You got him? <laughs> Good. <laughs> so massive, uh, massive, massive crowds. I was going to say, this is this is really what uh, fun runs about, the 10Ks, I think. It's, it's a good distance, as you said, Ian, for, for enjoying yourself, being part of this massive festival here today. And running across the bridge as well, that's another significant thing to have, isn't it, really? You can say that you've run across the bridge. Fantastic. Well, this is a big part of it. Over 60 countries are represented today. There's 3,500 international runners, nearly 7,000 interstate runners. And, of course, a financial boon for Sydney and New South Wales in general, nearly $18 million uh, will be the economic impact of the 2019 Blackmoors Sydney Running Festival. So that's why Destination New South Wales certainly key partners in uh, this event. And it continues to go from strength to strength. And the 10K record numbers in there for that. And I think that, you know, the Sydney Harbour Bridge and the Opera House are synonymous with Australia and this world famous city of Sydney so to say that you run you don't have to tell anyone twice they get it they know if you say you run over the bridge that's a, a monumental effort I think if you're if you're a runner jogger or, or whatever you've got to treat this as one of the bucket list events haven't you to do because you know, there's not I can't think of really even some of the big city marathons that I've been to where you finish in front of an iconic place like this you know the Sydney Opera House. Approaching the 20k mark Felix Kipritic has now moved up to the man who was out there very much by himself uh, in Joseph Abramoy so uh, Kipritic has obviously decided this is now where I'll make a move up to the leader. Yeah, and then again he's out and he's our pre-race favourite a very experienced marathon runner ran very very fast much faster than the pace they've been running so this isn't and he looks pretty relaxed too. That's, that's a good point that Steve mentioned previously about uh, the two differences in style. There you can see really the, uh, the, the, the smooth running of, of, of Kipritic there on the right, as opposed to maybe the Apremoy, who's, who looks more like a track runner. His arms are a bit more aggressive. His, his legs are a bit more powerful. And that's what you look at. Look at the legs and the knee lift, because I can tell you, Apremoy will not have that knee lift at the 40 kilometre mark because you can't because the fatigue will have hit in so you want to be more efficient so you can see Felix Kipritic is very efficient great looking marathon style and how good for these people who are running to the left of frame here they can actually see what sort of pace the elite runners are at they can wave as they see them they will not see them until the finish line when they're on the podium collecting the medals but what a great opportunity for the average weekend warrior to be able to say wow that is, that's marathon. We, we all start on the same start line, we all cross the finish line, and we all are out enjoying the roads together. I suppose we must point out, obviously, it looked like Ben St. Lawrence has decided that that was enough for him at that stage, and he, he, he just clicked off at around about the what, 17k mark. Yeah, yeah, so, and he set the pace up nicely, and whilst he's a bit aggressive, he's got it done. So we're heading towards the halfway mark. Sydney, Sunday morning. 
for the Blackmoors Sydney Running Festival. So wearing 14, Bonnet's Couture. And it is, of course, the Australian marathon title in there as well. Masocio, there she is, just on the inside there, blue, looking very comfortable. I think we've all said that she's the one to watch. Just moving up onto the shoulder or the inside of Couture. Again, a lovely move, a lovely, smooth, relaxed style. But it is early days still, and they're all grouping together, these women, which is good. Yes. Yeah, and Josephine Chepkowicz just in, tucked in behind there, number nine, so setting them all up. These four women look like they've formed that pack. They're happy with the pace. They, you can see the difference here. They're just in their zone. They're just rolling along very comfortably here. Dion doing a good job. Well, moving back now to the men, you can see really the, the pre-race favourite, I suppose, if there was one amongst all the uh, Kenyans, is Felix Kipratich there, just moving up onto the, the shoulder, maybe into the lead now. Yes, 2.05.33 PB from Daegu earlier this year when he, he won there. So that's phenomenal running, just, uh, you know, yeah. he's well and truly ahead of the the, uh, the um, record pace that he needs to be on. For him, this would be just a normal run. So he doesn't have to do anything superhuman. He just has to perform like he has done many times before. Well, just for a quick glance there, Aprilmoy just looked over his shoulder for the first time. Uh, in about an hour or so to see who was coming up behind and they're coming up fast actually that's Kunyunga here with number five on and just behind that I think is uh, Kemboy so this group now of four Kenyans are really battling it out Aprilmoy though hasn't surrendered the lead yet but you can see that style of his as Steve said very bouncy on his toes all the time and that's going to, I think, pay a little bit of a toll later on. But he's, a, he's still a decent marathon runner. I mustn't dismiss him, I suppose. But you, he's now surrounded by perhaps a group of other athletes which are a little bit better. Yeah, we're into the race now, no doubt about that. And there's Ken Boy on left of screen, who's um, our defending champion. And he looks pretty relaxed as well. So we've got out. We're on the money here. So I was two there, number seven, tucked in behind as well. So really got the protagonists that we expected to be up there. Although, you know, Kip Karui dropping out, that's, um, there's always, it's, you have different lead-ins, different issues on the day, so we've got a pretty established pack now, though. And one mustn't forget, just at the back there, just chugging along about 10 metres behind is the is the, is the Japanese there, Sasaki. He's still in there. He's uh, just working his way slowly back to try and get into this group of uh, five of the Kenyans. And he's got a... a 208 PB as well, so well credentialed. Opened in 1932, the Sydney Harbour Bridge is a world-renowned symbol of Australia. Positioned across Sydney's breathtaking natural harbour, the bridge has become one of the most photographed features of Sydney and climbing it is absolutely brilliant. A very popular tourist experience. You climb at a slower pace than what these ladies, also our Australian in there, Dion as well, and the men are just a bit further up the road as part of the Blackmoors Sydney Marathon. Heading towards the half May mark, uh, Centennial Park, and they obviously run right through Centennial Park. They zig and zag before heading back towards the CBD. Well, not, not, not quite up to the halfway mark there but you can just see the pace they're running at there was a the cyclist on the other side there was that was riding pretty hard to keep up with these women at the moment there you go look just uh, ticking along on the outside there so they're as steve said they're running really well these women they're really putting the pace in early and we'll get a gauge pretty shortly you can see they're through 18k and around the park so once we hit uh, 20 21k we'll get some idea but i'm i'm sensing that they're pretty comfortably under race record pace at the moment and a good pack of women Sasaki there, the Japanese athlete, pulled right back there at that feeding station. He, he actually got up right up to the rest of the other athletes there at the, at the uh, four of the race. Well, he needs to be on this pack. This is where the winner is going to come from. And also, 
as we know in a marathon, if you drop off and you're running by yourself, it can be very difficult mentally. So it's a lot easier running on the, even if it's only a couple of seconds quicker, it's better to be in a pack and being able to get that carry of the feeling of being in the lead pack. Well, Apromoy, his usual uh, technique there at the front again, just pushing ahead. He looks like the pacemaker. I'm surprised yeah. he's been so aggressive it's from, from basically from the get-go. I was going to say, maybe they've had a word you know, between themselves and he's probably said, look, I can pace you through halfway. And if that's what he's doing, then he's doing a really good job. He didn't obviously need Ben St. Lawrence, but uh, having said that, is he going to keep going at this rhythm or not? It's, it's one of those things we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, well, we're seeing them through 20K at just under 62. So... They're really on, they're, they're in the mid to tens, which is they're going to need to keep this pace rolling. That, that course record, 2.11.18, is it's just in their sights at the moment. You, and as I say, the back an, end will be difficult. Yeah, so. you said that they can't do a negative split or they will do a negative split. Well, there is a good pack here, so a couple can, can really push on because there's so many in the pack. But it's always difficult just to increase pace. It's OK to hold, very difficult to increase. Do you think if they get to the halfway point, though, and they realise they're not in with a chance of breaking the record, they they're, they're go into race mode? They'll start thinking, of, I'm going to win it rather than go for the record? No, I think they'll go the other way. I think they'll suddenly realise that if we are going to get the record, we need to start getting going now. So I think that we may see that pack break up when they realise that they're just on about 2.10 to 11 pace. They'll probably be, want to be a little bit quicker. Destination New South Wales, of course, the support of strategic partnerships like that has seen the event go to IAAF gold status, putting it on the same podium as London, New York and Boston, of course. So the New South Wales government certainly key partners. The Minister for Tourism is Stuart Ayres. The New South Wales government, through its major events and marketing agency, Destination New South Wales, is really proud to be supporting this year's Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. And this event has become one of the most iconic running events anywhere in the world. We've seen over 12,500 people come to Sydney to participate in this event. And last year it generated over $10 million in visitor expenditure. So not only being a fantastic and fun event, it's also something that really supports jobs right across Sydney. Get out and enjoy Enjoy Sydney at its absolute best. Enjoy the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. A terrific event both on and off the course as well. So Destination New South Wales, key partners with the Sydney Blackmore's Running Festival. And we talk about it being a festival because there is the, the family walk, there is the 10K, there is the half marathon, and there's what we can see here, the full 42 kilometre distance. And this is our lead group. Yeah, so we've got uh, Kunyaga there, number five. Camboy defending champion four, Silas two in behind number seven, and then of course um, looking at Apparamoy who's been in that front and prominent, and Felix Kipritich. So all except Kip Karui, our, our favourites are right in that group, and our Japanese Satoru Sasaki as well. So I think they've settled a little bit now. Pacemakers, Benny stepped off, and um, they've settled into a good rhythm. Yeah, well, you know, 10 victories to the Kenyans and four to the Japanese in the past. So this is formatting into that sort of thing again, isn't it, really? But they're stacked up against uh, Sasaki there with the other athletes around him, I think. Yes. So after spending time in Centennial Park, they are now heading back past the Sydney Cricket Ground. You can see the gates on the left-hand side of the frame there. And, of course, our uh, regular runners, our everyday mums and dads and brothers and sisters just enjoying the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival in there. Quite a few running with phones and trying to take pictures of the elite runners, but the pace with which they're going past you is phenomenal. Yes, and we're getting uh, through halfway in around... Uh, 2.11 pace, so they're, they're right on that record pace. Keep in mind that record from 2014, Gamita's 2.11.18, so they're, 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 it's a good pack there, so I'm, I'm not concerned yet, but that'll be front and centre of their mind. They want to win the race, but they do want to run fast and get that record bonus. We've just ticked over the halfway point, but you don't talk about marathons in terms of a halfway point numerically at 21 kilometres. You have yeah. a different point for the halfway, don't you? I do. Well, we sort of say 30. I, I like to go 28 because, you know, 14K, 28K, 42, you're two-thirds of the way through the distance on the measure, but you are halfway because the last 14K isn't like the first 
14, let me tell you. So halfway is about 28k in feeling. You know, if you're out there, and you, you know, if you run a marathon, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> and if you run a good marathon, you may not. If you run a bad one, you clearly understand my theory. You've got the cement boots on for the final 14 kilometres, is that right? Exactly. And that's what we've got to understand. You know, you're not only, we're talking about the race and the times they're running out the front, but you're fighting internally. You've trained for so many years to get on the start line. And then within the race, things happen. You know, you have some bad spots, you have some ups and downs. For all of us, for everyone that runs today in this marathon, you will go through life experiences in the two, three, four, five hours you're out there. We can see our leaderboard for the women. Couture has certainly been up and most prominent and i'm adding that's 20 kilometers so i'm adding about three and a half minutes on there and you are seeing 72 224 well under that 228 that, that's race a, record if they pace. go on at that that's a great performance it really is this but is world-class women's it really marathon is yeah running. it really really is couture though she's been doing virtually the same as apromoy she's been leading that group of women all the way through up until now just behind, though, I think you can see that uh, the other athletes are just using her, really, to key off her, but they're not losing any ground. Apromoy, there he is, number six, the Blackmore's vest, still doing what he does, which is keeping up at the front there. I love Felix Kipritich, just has the perfect marathon style. Very relaxed arms, <laughs> looking very comfortable if you... If you Picturing a, a marathon runner and you're saying, what's the ideal marathon running action? There you are, number one, front of screen. So just having a look at the way the arms are raised and the, the fists of Apramoy traverse a lot more than what uh, Kipritich at the moment. He's a much more uh, narrow and compact style. So you're saying Apramoy with that raised fist and the high knee lift? Look, look how far he's, he's, his feet are going back, as Steve said. You know, he's, he's a track runner. You can see that. He can bounce, he's bouncing along on his toes, whereas on the inside there, Kipritich is just... You can almost see Kipritich looking across and having a chat to someone very casually. You know, it's not taking much out of him. There's a big difference, really big difference in terms of effort, economy of effort. The Blackmore Sydney Running Festival over the duration since its inception, and we're now heading towards a second and third decade. $21 million has been raised so far. One of the lead charities this year is the Leukaemia Foundation. My name's Elle Halliwell. I have been working with the Leukaemia Foundation for about three years since I myself was diagnosed with blood cancer. The Leukaemia Foundation is a fantastic organisation which supports people who are living with blood cancer as well as their families. They also fund research into finding hopefully one day a cure. One of the great programs that the Leukaemia Foundation has is called the Blood Buddies Program. Now this is something that I um, reached out to early on in my diagnosis and um, the Leukaemia Foundation managed to track down someone who had been in a similar situation um, who I got to talk to and it was because of that that I just didn't feel so alone. It was a really, really great way to support other people in the community who are living with blood cancer. Yeah, so well done to Al and of course to all the other runners. There's over a hundred official charities where runners will actually raise money for a charity just by completing the event as well. So brilliant to uh, not only the more prominent uh, people who raise money for charity, but also just the everyday person that also wants to run and be a part of the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. And, and back to Steve's point, Ian, one of the measures is your bounce from your shoulder and your head. So as we're looking at this front shot, it's the efficiency is measured by the amount of vertical movement in your shoulders and head. And Paula Ratcliffe, who holds the world record for, for women's marathon running, while she, her head used to shake around a lot, apparently her shoulders were almost immovable vertically and that's why she was so successful so whilst we look at the legs being efficient we also want to see how much vertical because you honestly you, you don't want to waste energy by jumping vertically because in this event you want to go horizontal as quick as you possibly can <laughs> so how hard is that to train into a man or a woman if you come in with a natural gait a natural running style steve ovet <laughs> saying that the track athletes just can't actually get across steve would you have been a chance at a marathon no no possible <laughs> way I, I, my bounce was about i think i was going up more than i was going forward at some stages so no i think that you have to be genetically 
predisposed predisposed to that really to be certain i was born to be a, a track runner and, and, I, and i think that's the way that i evolved steve on the other hand marathon is perfect for him yeah i think you can train to lose that bounce and and that's why we talk about the preparation and the mileage to allow you to become more efficient i think fatigue would have actually <laughs> would have actually made me bounce a lot less to be yes. honest yes. <laughs> Yeah, not too much bounce when you're walking. <laughs> <laughs> this is also our Blackmoors Bridge Runners as well. 16,500 competitors. Fantastic. 10 kilometres is ahead for these athletes. Well, the women still there. That group hasn't really changed too much. And Couture's doing all that she's done so far in this race. Another great, really, front running from the Kenyan. Looking very comfortable. Just, uh, Steve said, not much movement there in the uh, shoulders. Just rocking side to side. You'd expect that, really. Just behind her, though, Basosio, the one that we think could be a real danger. She's looking a little bit sort of stressed, and maybe or not. Just behind there. You can see uh, Kip Kowic. So these three are just uh, ticking along nicely. So Basosio, the Kenyan, 26-year-old. Certainly one of the prominent runners here. It is also the Australian Marathon title up for grabs. You can see one of the Aussies there. Dion has certainly been at the mm. forefront and he'll be looking for that title, I would think. Yeah, he's looking good. But I mean, at the same time, let's not forget that the weather is starting to pick up the other getting a little bit warmer than it was earlier on so these athletes starting to suffer a little bit more just tucked in behind there Chalchissa just uh, maybe suffering a little bit there in the white vest red shorts but the back of that group of what is it six now so Chalchissa from Bahrain the 28 year old 228 50 is her personal best this is a really good class field though Ian I mean this is probably the best field we've had in terms of depth for the women and that's why they're running so fast because they all know that they can run under virtually record pace all of them without any problems at all and what they're doing is really just using couture to, to key off at this stage of the race just over halfway as steve said perhaps not mentally just over halfway but they're going through taking on plenty of fluids which is really important and if they click this through this is record this is record this is record pace it really is so we might see a record to unfold in the women's event the men have had a pace setter early. And we'll wait and see if they are able to maintain that record pace. It looks like Apramoya's yeah. got out by himself yes. at the moment as they make their way back through Hyde Park and the Archibald Fountain. Yeah, Apramoya now is putting a bit of a spurt on him. We call him a, a track runner, and he's literally sprinted away there about, what, 20 metres or so, Steve? Yeah, he's off again. He can't He, he can't, can't contain himself, can there, he? No. But that's about that's what the marathon is about though, isn't it? Containing, waiting, waiting, waiting. It because is. the pain comes later in the race. And nestled between a tranquil inner Harvey beach on one side and a popular Pacific Ocean surf beach on the other, Manly combines a laid-back attitude with a sophisticated dining scene and stylish shopping as well. Sydney's most famous ferry ride leads to Manly, an iconic journey that's not to be missed. Manly Beach, certainly a special place here in Sydney. The Blackmoors Sydney Marathon, we have passed the halfway point. Steve Monaghetti, Olympic gold medalist, and Steve Ovet, uh, Steve Ovet rather, Olympic gold medalist, Steve Monaghetti, a Commonwealth Games gold medalist as well. Monas, I just upgraded you oh, there a little right. bit on the medal win. Thanks very much, I'll take that. <laughs> Wouldn't I love to be that legend, Steve Ovet, alongside us. So Apramoy's jumped off the front again after they uh, came back together for a couple of kilometres, but Apramoy seems determined to be that man out in front. He does, and it's uh, again, I'm not going to be going to keep harping on it, but in a marathon, you want to get, you tick off as many kilometres as you can. So in the pack, you're a lot more relaxed and you're not seeing the distance up the road. You do get a clear run into your drink station, as we're seeing there, but... I just think you want to be in the pack and, and be sparing as much energy as you can. You don't want to overwork. They're through 25 kilometres there, and you know, maybe they've just looked at that pace and want to keep it rolling a bit more, but um, they're all through that drink station pretty well. 
So 17 drink stations we have got there. You could see they actually picked up, while everyone else has cups, for the elite runners there was their own drink bottles, distinguished by name and, and colour, and you could see Aprimoy was the first to collect that. What's the difference, Steve Monaghetti? So they will have their own a specific drink, so they will have trained using that drink, so with electrolytes and and they will they are only allowed to take their own drink and they have to submit that the night before and so it's regulated making sure it's in a secure place and they can only take their own drink because you don't want it to be spiked or someone else putting something in your drink or getting one by mistake so if they do a drug test at the end of the event they have taken fluid on board that they're well aware of and used to. Change in proceedings here. Apramoy now out the back in the lighter green singlet, the Blackmore singlet. We can see him number six. And Felix Kipritic has now taken charge of this group. So now we see, and I think that's probably expected. We, we predicted it a bit early, and I think he probably had one last effort and thought, I'm going to really go and see how I'm feeling here. But... Now he's starting to really suffer from, I think, being a bit aggressive early on. So the elastic band is starting to be stretched for Apramoy, who has certainly been prominent for the first 23, 24 kilometres, along with our pace centre in Ben St Lawrence. But now it seems the lead group is starting to really make some distance. Yes, and he's looked behind, so he's conscious. He's not look when you start looking behind, that's you're aware that you're telltale. Slowly. That's a telltale sign, and yeah. So he's done. I think we can probably say it's down to. A, a group of five, four Kenyans and our lone Japanese, Esoturo Sasaki. So the numbers that we see them, uh, wearing the A1 is Felix Kipritich. Uh, our defending champion, Elijah Kimboy, is in the number four in there as well. We've seen Apramoy out the back. And uh, this is where we are expecting our winner now to be able to come from. And Sasaki, the Japanese runner in the white singlet, the 33-year-old from Japan, he's done a 208.56. So Sasaki will certainly be there, you would suggest, when the whips are cracking. Yeah, he's yeah. doing well, yeah. He's keeping up there, and that's the most important thing, just to wait and see what he can do. I mean, he's not going to do anything heroic before that, I don't think, Steve. Is. He's going to wait and see what the thrown down in front of him, I think, by the other Africans. Yeah, and the Japanese have got a really good record, as we've mentioned here before. So, And uh, their, their marathon history is incredible. They've got, uh, they've got a, their Olympic trial on uh, today, I think. Or to, the women's is today, I think. So... You know, they're going to, um, they've got a huge reputation as marathon runners, so don't underestimate uh, Sasaki as well. Just seeing the women there, it looks like Chelchisa also out the back, the 28-year-old running under the Bahrain flag. So Chelchisa at the moment looking like she was out the back in the white singlet. As we can see, some of the nearly 40,000 runners. The numbers are absolutely brilliant. We've got 5,500 entries for the 42-kilometre, the Blackmore Sydney Marathon, uh, nearly 10,000 competitors in the Blackmore's Half Marathon, over 8,000 competitors in the Family Run and the Blackmore's Bridge Run, 16,500 competitors as well. Great numbers, terrific support for athletics because people come from international venues, they come from interstate as well and uh, great to see our elite runners here too. Yes, and down to a, a race in three in the women's by the looks of it there, so uh, that, that quick pace is certainly... Uh, Found out unlucky number 13. In were you superstitious like that if you were running with a number 13 <laughs> monitors? Oh, well, I used to have a. We have a rule that you, you want to finish higher than your number. But after winning a few races, they don't keep giving me number one. <laughs> it's pretty hard to finish higher than number one. So. Well, Not a sport, really a sport you know a bit about, uh, Steve Ovet cycling, they turn the number upside down they when do. it's on the back of the they jersey. They do, yeah. There's a bit of yeah, there's a bit of worry if you get that number in cycling, yeah, because you're going down the hill at 80 k an hour with nothing between you and tarmac apart from a bit of light cream. Yes, you're gonna you're gonna worry a little bit. Athletes making their way across uh, the bridge run, and it is spectacular. We said earlier in the broadcast the bridge is only shut twice uh, per year: once for the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival and once on New Year's Eve, which we know is a terrific celebration. So a wonderful and a rare occasion for everyone who competes here. Interesting battle going on here, really, if you think about it, Steve. You've got the reigning champion, Kemboy, against the, perhaps the pre-race favourite, Kip Rottich. Those two 
those two could have a bit of a battle actually over because you know the Ken Boy knows the course he knows what to, ha what to happen and last year he ran really well very comfortable winner last year yes he did and then you know that's the difference in uh, whereas Kipri teaches he's the better well credential but it doesn't matter they're both so at such a high level that either could win so certainly having won before does give you a distinct advantage this shows some of the forethought too going into this event where a couple of the main roads are breached which means that obviously they can get the joy of running through Hyde Park and then straight on to the continuation of it and uh, terrific uh, effort by Pont3, the organisers, Athletics Australia, everyone involved to be able to make sure that it's a seamless transition. Yeah, a little pinch. I, I never like going up and down those little bridges. <laughs> Just can be a bit annoying and changing gear on your, on your rhythm. Yeah, but they've managed to get over there pretty comfortably. Nice shaded part through um, Hyde Park as well. So they'll really appreciate that shade. Beautiful through that section of the course. So they've sort of done that that section out Centennial Park. They've come back into town. Now they wander out around the harbour. So they've still got. Um, and I've still got a lot of running to go. You don't think they're coming back towards the finish line. We've got another hour or so of running here. Well, we forget about the harbour, don't we? We talk about the bridge, we talk about the opera house, but Circular Quay, that, that in itself is a beautiful area, isn't it? Right by the water. You're literally running right next to the water for a, a great deal of the race. And one of the great fountains, of course, is a part of Hyde Park. Uh, there's the Archibald Fountain in there. There's the Anzac Memorial, the Pool of Reflection, and plenty of monuments as well. So the women now just making their way through Hyde Park and again we've got the number 14 of Couture who's been out in front the oldest female in the elite category at the age of 32. Yep so the Kenyan women prominent as are the Kenyan men. Yeah, yeah not much difference between these four really and just behind them as you said before the lone Japanese athlete there, Sasaki, just doing all he has to do, really. Still looking comfortable, that's good. Yes, we haven't spoken too much about Silas, too, but he, he's sitting, he's in the nice spot. That's where you want to sit, just in the park and rolling along. He's number seven, so uh, there's a good group here. So I think they've settled into that pace, and it's about right on 2.11, so they're just under race record pace at the moment. Looks to me like they've established it. Joseph's dropped off, the pace has dropped off, and they're now just in, in their the rhythm. Yeah. yeah, they're in yeah. their rhythm, they're in their yeah. groove now. That's going to be like that for a while until it gets to, say, the pointy end of the marathon, I think, where they're going to start deciding what they're going to do, race for it or all go for the record. That's right, yes. Yeah. So I think we're seeing that just settle now a little bit through this middle section of the course. So they're heading in towards the Rocks area, Sydney's historic quarter, the site of the first European settlement, 1788 the neighbourhood cut from sandstone cliffs. It's wonderful scenery rising above the Sydney Harbour and some of the oldest pubs, and I know Steve Ovet, you'd be very interested as a tourist to Sydney, some of the oldest pubs are in at the rocks as well. We'll have to go and sort those out <laughs> afterwards, I think, make sure that they're still there. <laughs> Just in the interest of research, we need to uh, head in there. This is our lead group of men. Uh, it started with about seven or eight in that lead group. It's now been whittled down to five. Uh, the Japanese runner, Sasaki, is in the white singlet. Kipritich, who was the man that Steve Ovet and Steve Monaghetti said he's the most likely. He is to the left of your frame there with the slightly longer athletic shorts on all the way down to the knees. So running at 314 uh, kilometre pace, Steve. So, the, yeah, they're, they're, they're on the route about the, the rectal pace. Yeah, I'd like it to be a little bit quicker. Yeah. I'm not going to deny that. You always want to have a little bit of time up your sleeve, but especially when these guys are, you know, two five. Two eight marathon runners. We we do have Michael Cunyaga. He's um, he's there in that pack, and he's a he's two ten. So he's probably the one who we would expect to struggle a little bit. He's in that blue and what would you call that? Is that sort of reddish, light red? So he's distinguished the number five there. So he's probably the one that's slightly going to find this pace a bit more challenging, but. I think Sasaki the should be fine. Yeah, I think Sasaki's quite happy at this rhythm. As long as no one starts really pushing on at this stage, I think he thinks that well, I'm still in there. I remember the chance. This is the sort of this is the sort of race pace that I can handle. Anything faster than this, 
he's going to be in trouble, I think. Yes, but we've got to understand that the course record is 2.11. We keep banging on about the course record. It's 2.11 for a reason. I mean, it's not they're not going to run 2.1 on this course. So, you know, that's that's still very good running on this course. So, and they're right on that. But they do look very comfortable at that pace. So I think we've got a really good race on our hands. And they'll be right on race record. And I think that once we get down to the business end, they're going to start kicking it in. And, Sneak under that race record time, and will we have a Kenyan winner? Mm. Well, a betting man would say he is a betting person. Well, one out of problem. five, uh, but uh, for the for the Japanese, it's it's going to be looks like it could be, you know, a Kenyan win again. That makes it number eleven out of the uh, history. Yeah, but we've got a you know got a great race on our hands, and you know at this stage is starting. They're hitting that stage where I say you know halfway, and things will happen. Don't, don't, whilst they're looking very relaxed now, stick tight and stay watching because it's going to get um, serious soon. So many different events. The bridge run with over 16,000 competitors is certainly one of the features, uh, 10 kilometres. And uh, that has been run and won. James Nipperus doing it in 30.08. Kieran Tall was in second place. And Bryce Anderson crossing the line in third. So well done to James Nipperus. He takes out the 10 kilometre bridge run as part of the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. And look at that vista there. You can see Nipperus, the result there. Tall in second place. And also Bryce Anderson as well. So 30 minutes, 30.08 for 10. In case. Three minute case, that's good going. Nipper will be happy with that. Get the win under his belt. A Sydney side, a very experienced steepler and distance runner, Australian distance runner of note. So, good run for Nipper. So, we've had a little change at the front of the women's as well. We can still see Asocio, Asocio yeah. is there and also. Chip Koic. Just seeing where Couture is, the one that was leading it up until that stage. Looks like she's dropped off fairly dramatically, or maybe um, she's just behind the camera crew here on the bike. But Basosio now starting to push on a bit, and we'd expect that, really. She's the real class act, I think, in the women's race, although we mustn't disrespect some of the other athletes. So Basosio, the 26-year-old from Kenya, is in the right of screen there with the purple colours and wearing number nine Chip Kovic, the 30 year old from Kenya in the black singlet. I wonder whether Couture was just in there to, to keep the pace going or not. Yeah, I said before the Kenyans do like to talk about the race before, they do like to decide who's going to do what. Maybe that was something which was uh, uh, predisposed before that they were going to let her do the first part of the race and then take it up from there. I don't know, we we'll have to wait and see where she is. I'm not surprised with just such a fast pace. I think that was always going to happen. We're starting to see it at the 26 kilometre mark for the women, 29 kilometre mark for the men. And it looks like Felix Kipritich, the 31 year old from Kenya, is now starting to really assert his ascendancy. And this is significant. So this is not, we're not, we're not saying this is just a little gap. This is significant. This is a race winning break. The, the, most credentialed runner in the field has made a break at, at the 29 kilometre mark, so this is significant and looking fantastic. Yeah, he looks fresh, doesn't he? And give credit though, behind him, Sasaki, the Japanese, I think, going for the break. He was trying to close it down. So the beautiful Sydney Harbour Bridge, of course, celebrating 85 years, along with Blackmoors as well. A famous feature right around the world. You're watching the Blackmoors Sydney Running Festival. Looks like the break has been made here by Kipritich, Felix Kipritich, the 31-year-old. Yeah, he had a bit of a sneak around there saying, well, no one's come with me, so this is it. I, I can run on and, and win this race. He just has to hold together. And uh, you don't go, don't make a break like that unless you're feeling pretty good. So signs are positive. Yeah, he looks comfortable and he's pulling away even though, you know, it's foreshortened by the camera angle. Sasaki, I think, tried to go with him, but he looks as if he's given up a little bit. And now just tucking in behind the rest of the uh, Kenyan athletes there in you know, second, third and fourth. So you can see, look at that beautiful style. As Steve said earlier, very relaxed. And he obviously 
coming into this race was the was the main man and I think he's waited and waited and waited until everybody else started to fade and now he's starting to push on. Yeah, I, I think he's, he's at 205. I think he's about 75th fastest marathon runner of all time in history. So 205 is very, very fast running, under three minutes per kilometre. So this pace for him is um, not unexpected and not unusual. And he, he's not comfortable, but he's certainly pushing on really strong. Well, as we saw, that sort of pace that you said, under 3K for the marathon, we just saw Nippers run the 10K mm. over 3K yeah. per, per, per marathon. That just goes you how class act this man is, really. That's right, exactly. He would win the, the 10K by over a minute. So uh, still keep to, going. And still keep going, that's yeah. right. So it's good running, and he looks full of running. Well, seven seconds there, the chase the chase behind him. He's opened up that seven-second gap pretty quickly. Looks comfortable taking the hill, whatever little bit it is. Very comfortably indeed. He's pushing on. The gap opening up all the time. One of these flyovers that um, we have around in the Sydney CBD. It's not quite as hilly as it looks on that shot there. The camera's um, deceptive, but it's hilly enough to show that he's still feeling comfortable. He wouldn't be running on as strongly as that. Uh, looking at his uh, the calibre of, of this athlete, he's won so many of the uh, marathons around the world. He knows exactly what he's doing. You know, he's, he's won about four or five in the, in the past and finished second, fifth and fourth in virtually. He's been up there in all of his marathons. He knows exactly what he's doing. So that break was at the right time to break not only just uh, the rest of the runners, but to make sure that he was comfortably in front, I think, for the rest of the race without any worries. Some water on board there, Silas too. Maybe just a sign he's struggling a little bit, I would sense. He's chasing water, he's really looking for it. So. But not this man. And this is the venue for the race. The Sydney Harbour surrounded on three sides by national parks, a playground on and off the water, an iconic vista, the Sydney Harbour. Absolutely spectacular. And it's Darling Harbour at the moment where our runners are as they make their way through Darling Harbour, a lively harbourside precinct. Darling Harbour, one of Sydney's largest dining, shopping and entertaining hubs as well. A very good morning to you if you're just joining us. It is the Blackmoors Sydney Running Festival. We've got uh, one man who's established a lead out the front, Felix Kipritich, and also in the women. Now, leaders are starting to emerge there too. We've passed the 30 kilometre mark, so according to Steve Monaghetti, we're just about <laughs> over the halfway point. Not mathematically, but mentally for the runners. Yeah, and we're seeing that certainly the way that the races have broken up. And just for people at home just tuning in, the women are, are running really fast pace, well ahead of race record pace, whereas the men a ride on that race record pace and we're sensing that Felix, Felix Kipritich has made a, a race winning break and is probably injecting a bit of pace to make sure he gets that race record. This is Stella Basosio who is out the front at the moment. Of course the women's 10 kilometre bridge run as well. A great event, over 16,000 competitors in the bridge run. We've seen the men's results a little bit earlier but the women have also had a fantastic run as well and they get the advantage of being able to run all the way across the bridge and um, we'll get to those winners in just a moment but Barsacio at the moment is working her way around through the rocks area as part of the marathon. Dion Finicaro they're doing a good job and we're seeing that they're probably not the gap that the men have got but certainly a significant break there for Stella Barsocio, 223 marathon runner and uh, again probably the pre-race favourite we mentioned going in. Kip Rotich really piling it on, isn't he, really? I mean, you said the negative slip might be difficult, but the way he's running at the moment, Steve, he looks like he's uh, he's really picked up the pace. And Dean's letting me know it, it is a bit quicker, so they've ducked under that 2.11 pace. So he's certainly... This this break hasn't happened because the others have slowed. He's injected some pace. Sasaki, though, I think, has decided that he's just going to move ahead now just to try and get into his rhythm. He's a long way back from uh, the lead there, but working hard doing well yeah, and Kenyaga there trying to just break yeah. I think they're realizing this is significant 
you know, they're, they're still going to be on the days, but you want to win and you want to break the record. And if you're going to win the race, you need to cover this break. Still 10K or so, 2 or 11K to go. So it's, it was an early break, but a confident one, I think. Yes, and I think the only thing we could see here that's is the weather, you know, if it is a little bit warmer out there that Felix Kipritich might start to struggle at the back end. But at the moment, he's looking Motoring. clearly uh, our, our winner. So the pre-race favourites in both the men's and women's looking like they've established a decisive break. So Kipritich has still got 10 kilometres to go. For some people, the 10 kilometres is the whole event and the bridge run is brilliant. This is our women's winner, Marnie Ponton, in 34 minutes. Lauren Reed, a new mum, was second in 34.30 and then Michelle Pearson in 35.30 as well. So well done to Marnie and you can see the results board there. 34.21 for Marnie Ponton, Lauren Reed 34.31 and 35.30 for our third place getter in Michelle Pearson. And back to the Blackmores Sydney Running Festival Marathon beautiful sights in and around the harbour. Darling Harbour we spoke about. It's got things like Sea Life Sydney Aquarium, Wildlife Sydney, Scenic Waterfront Promenades, El Fresco Cafes, bars, restaurants and also nightclubs as well. A lot of people come to Sydney for a whole weekend and maybe get inside and have a look at some of those uh, nightclubs as well as the El Fresco Cafes. I do remember the Sydney Olympics, this this course that we're remembering. I think they were coming out of the nightclubs up at <laughs> Oxford Street while we were, we, when we were running past a few a few times. Yeah, that's a bit too tempting, really, isn't it, I suppose? <laughs> anyway, getting back to the serious part of the race, this guy's really motoring on, isn't he? He's pushing the pace. The gap is opening up all the time, really is. And this is a class act. He's after the record, he's after the win as well. So that's, that's fantastic running. Well, you talk about the Sydney Olympics, and this is the only participation legacy event that remains from 19 years ago and it was tracked originally on the original blue line of the Sydney Marathon. It was, yeah, so I ran it a couple of times post the Sydney Olympics with a few friends and pacing it and it was nice and some of that blue line still exists and I feel a bit of a tinge of, of emotion when I see that blue line. I'm normally in a taxi, I'm not running it, but, but it's um, no, a great legacy. And as I say, I love that it, we've been able to continue that. And so many people are out here um, participating today as a result of that. Does the marathon have a special place in Olympic history because it is such a unique event? It's steeped in history, of course, we know it, uh, the measurement, uh, the 42 kilometre or 26 miles as it used to be, but it's got a special place, hasn't it? Well, it has for me. I'm not sure if it has <laughs> for Steve, it has for most, but yes, and there's everyone knows that distance is measured and you know, so there is a special significance and, um, you know, it's great history and the events now that unfold, they're running so fast in, in um, city marathons like here in Sydney, but the, in the championships, there's great races as well that unfold. Michael Kenyuga is on screen at the moment, the 32-year-old from Kenya. He's run a 2.10 at 16. That is his PB. He'll have his work cut out if he's wanting to try and track Kipritic at the moment. But Basosio now starting to move away, so uh, she's she's really, I suppose, gapping on the uh, athletes behind. And she's running fast and, and starting to pick up some of the men who are slowing, which shows how fast she is running. So as you start to pick, and these men are quality athletes, so she's running at 325 minutes per minute seconds per kilometre. So she's really rolling and holding that well under race record pace. And we're also hearing out on the road that um, Felix has also picked up the pace and is running uh, a few seconds quicker than uh, race record. So he's really starting to get into the two tens, maybe even a sub two ten. How could we imagine that? Interesting though, just before there, we saw Kanyunga actually looked like he was actually coming back there. He was putting a bit of a pace on. And uh, I know that sometimes it's foreshortened by the camera angle. But Kanyunga there is, is still working hard in second place. Right. OK, you run with that line, that's fine, Steve. Oh, there he is. There he is, just coming. Yeah. How hard is this at the moment to try and bridge that gap? You know you've left the others behind, you're watching a man who's further yeah. down the road. Mentally, how tough is this going to be? I like, I like to give him a chance. Steve obviously doesn't, so that's no, the well, difference. Well, you do, and you want to look up, and you want to be positive and look up because you want to be chasing the person in front, not looking at the person that's catching you from behind. So psychologically, it is really important. They're probably down to... They'd be thinking they've got half an hour of running to go, so they're starting to get into that really personal zone of 
Have I still got enough of that glycogen going? Have I gone a bit too hard early? No, I'm OK. And I'm, I'm winning and running well. Running my own race, but, but still but, trying but to look at my But you know the marathon position. is classic for last-minute drama. You know that. Yes. You know, you know that sometimes it looks as if it's all over. And then in the last kilometre or so, yeah. something dramatic something happens. happens. You, know, you never know. And historically, if people have heard me before, I've called many marathons that have, <laughs> have never ended up in the result that I've called because strange things happen, certainly in that last 15 minutes in both men's and women's. So we're not done with quite yet. He's there. I'll give Kunyunga a chance. Yeah. He's still there. Yep. There he comes. He's still looking sprightly. I mean, he's not dying. That's the thing. And he's, his arms are still working well. I think he's running a bit aggressively, though. He looks like he's forcing to try and True. get back onto Felix, which might bring him undone late. I admire him for one, because this is the race. This is what we want to see. And he's, he's running like he wants to win the race, which is good. We see so many great parts of Sydney as part of the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. And the area they're heading into now is the Barangaroo Reserve. Barangaroo Reserve is a man-made public parkland which features sweeping harbour views and is one of the best spots to take in the city. Amongst the 75,000 native plants in the reserve are pedestrian and shared cycle paths and public lawn areas with views of the Harbour Bridge. Underneath the artificial hill is the Cutaway, a six-storey high event space built into the headland that can accommodate up to 5,000 people. Barangaroo is a beautiful addition to the Sydney Harbour, a must-see for locals and tourists alike. What a place to be running. What a place to oh. be running. Oh, I look, Spring Sunday morning. If you're watching this overseas and you're seeing this, this has got to be, this has got to be something you've got to come to. It's absolutely fabulous. It really is. Just the scenes, the area that you run through, the atmosphere here, the organisation, absolutely perfect. Yeah, beautiful. Lots of water and lots of greenery, I think we would say, on this course that um, certainly breaks up that pain a little bit along the way. So at the moment out in front is Felix Kipritic, who has run a 2.05.33 and I think has gone sub 2.07 on four different occasions. So he's uh, certainly doing it on his own terms at the moment, but at the 33, 34 kilometre mark, where do the aches and pains start to emerge? Oh, the, they definitely get you in your quads and, and that's where you start to feel that first signs of hitting the wall will be your quads are your biggest muscle, so they're normally the ones that go first and you will notice that that will affect that, that rhythm and that running action. But at the moment, no signs of that with Felix Kipritic. So sometimes, you know, little twists and turns like we're seeing on the course here, that really gives you a telltale sign of how you're running as well. So you look at Felix Kipritic, if he's measuring and managing those turns without too much trouble, then he's still travelling pretty well. There's, there's the gap, actually. There's uh, Kipritic just, just going out of picture. And here's the chaser coming through here, Kunyunga. He's about, what, 300 metres, 400 metres behind, but he's still running well. He really is. Now, I'm just hearing from the course that Kenyunga actually had a moment of confusion and actually headed the wrong way momentarily ah. and was then steered back onto the course. So that gap now to Kipritic will be widened even further. That, that may have cost him. That may have cost him a lot, really. Right. You know. You're making excuses already. No, no, Steve. no. I'm just saying it may have cost no. him. You know, he's uh, giving him credit. If he's had to come back from that, not only physically, but mentally, he's realising he's made a mistake. So that's going to affect him, I think, a little bit. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how he copes with that, because I, I think he was running a little bit aggressively, and that would have just, you know, used a bit of that adrenaline that he will need to get him through this race. This is some of the Darling Harbour area, Barangaroo not far away as well. The Sydney Vista, absolutely superb this morning. Here is Kunyunga, Michael Kunyunga, the 32-year-old from Kenya, who's made it a little bit more difficult after taking a wrong turn, but we wish him well as he tries to chase down Felix Kipritic. Good morning to you. You're watching the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. Well, Kanyunga went off, off course. We don't know by how far or you know, what the sort of problem was for him. We just missed that, but he's still, you know, still chugging on. 
I reckon he's showing signs of just working hard. Those arms are flailing a little bit. I, I always look at signs just to say, but he's definitely running on. He's still full of running and aggressive, so he's, he's still going well. I haven't given up given up the chase just yet, but I think Felix Kipritich looks a lot more relaxed. And there's Stella Barsocio, upside down Fenicara there. He's doing a bit of pacing. He's also running his own race in the Australian Marathon Championships and looking pretty good. Well, I think he's sacrificing himself a little bit for Nicario. I think yes. I think he realises that, you know, this is the winner of the women's and he's helping her as much as he can. Yes. I mean, obviously, there's the selfless nut part of that, I think, because it, this is the Australian Championships, it is, and you'd like to do well in it. But I think he's looking across and helping, helping her as much as he can. Yeah, good on him. And I'm sure Stella's appreciating that as well. So Dion Finicaro is the man there. That's right, yeah. He's a very experienced, runs lots of marathons and come from an ultra, does ultras as well. So distance shouldn't be a problem for Dion. No, he's run 18 marathons, I think, in the last 20 months. So, you know, if you're talking about experience, it's, it's in his belt. It really is. Mm -hmm. So this is our leader, Kipritich from Kenya. And we know he's got uh, some good times within him. 205.33, the PB, as he breaches the 35-kilometre mark. I think this is the third place here coming through. Sasaki of Japan. Not sure the distance is between the, the, the chasers at the moment, but uh, fairly big gaps between them all, I think. Yeah, I think we're still seeing, um, I reckon, there's not... We'll just check if we can get that shot. No, we didn't quite get the gap there from Felix back to Michael Kanyaga, but I think it's probably... I think I reckon Felix has picked up the pace, and I think we're seeing him running away with this race, but uh, proof will be in the, in the eating about half an hour or under 20 minutes of running to go. So there it is. It's a, it's a half a minute gap between uh, Felix and Kanyunga. So it's a big gap. It is a big gap, but it's what we've got now... About another 7k to go. And if you love to shop, and who doesn't? Sydney, fabulous with all its international labels, innovative designers, master artisans and beautiful arcades. The Queen Victoria Building, 19th century grandeur, fashion, jewellery and gifts. And I reckon, Steve Avet, that looked like a top that would suit you absolutely beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm sure that I will um, try my best with those sort of things later on. But nevertheless, let's get back to the serious part of the, uh, the proceedings here. And it looks as if, as Steve said, he's put a bit of a, a spurt on. I think maybe someone said that there was a, a bit of a chance of Kunyunga closing the gap. It's not like uh, the Tour de France. They don't have microphones telling them where they are and, and who's chasing. But I think maybe the, he got the... Uh, the nod from one of the camera crew there that's just behind him or just in front of him, that the gap was closing a little bit. Yeah, and I think it's, I mean, it's interesting because you want to push on knowing that you want to establish a winning break, but again, you've just got to measure your own effort. So it's a challenge to do both. Just having a look at the wheelchair finish here, and that looks like Jake Lappin coming through in the grey in June 2017 he broke Kurt Fernley's 800 metre T54 Australian record which had stood for 13 years it looks like Jake Lappin making his way to the steps of the Sydney Opera House and we can see a lot of the runners coming through from the 10 kilometre run as well they continue to win I think you can see Jake Lappin there and Richard Coleman is the man who actually Breaks the ribbon. Richard Coleman been to four Olympics, two gold medals, both over the 800 metres, and then Jake Lappin just in behind him. So Richard Coleman, great effort too, Richard Coleman. He loves his AFL. He's actually a goal umpire in the Geelong League and has been involved in that as well. So well done to Richard Coleman taking out the Blackmoors wheelchair event as part of the Sydney Running Festival. Wow, that was a bit of a finish there, really, wasn't it? In the end. Mm. So, so Jake Lappin certainly made him work all the way. Great finish, and uh, I think that might be a little bit of a surprise. I think Jake may have gone in as a, as a favourite, but uh, Richard Coleman experienced and uh, hasn't wheeled a lot of marathons, so he's finished really well. Probably at that speed, just over that finishing section to get over the line. 
Kip Rotic, as we've seen before, just uh, doing what he has to do now, looking very casual. 36 kilometres, the gap about the same. Uh, two second differential now, just 28 seconds behind. Kanyunga just maybe clawing a little bit back, but not significant. Meanwhile, the women, though, I think this is a total dominance, really. Stella Bassosio, yeah. With the 223 personal best, and we're thinking on about 225, which is well under race pace, but comfortable for her and looking pretty strong. Still, they've still got a lot of running to go yet, so. You talk about that personal best, 223.36, that was a Rotterdam in April of this year, so she's coming in here in some great form. Yeah, and, and a very fast course in Rotterdam, great history, have had world records on that course in the past. So, a fast course there, which means, you know, that's where you try and run your personal best, but today it's probably all about winning the race and getting as close to that personal best and under the course record for Stella. 26 years old, perfect age, just peak of her powers for marathon running. 26, she's really uh, one of the babies of the group because we've got a lot of uh, post 30 year olds as uh, marathon runners will do. They uh, seem to get into that sort of zone, Steve, and, and then continue to ply their trade at the highest level. Yeah, especially with the women, and we're seeing Australian women's marathon running are going really well, and uh, Sinead Diver, 41, and Lisa Waitman, 42. So. And we saw today Belinda Martin at 45, still running, I think she ran 74 for the half, so fast running. So, yes, yeah, it's certainly a sport that you can still be running at high levels and at running personal bests well into your 40s. So wonderful aerial shot as they head through that Darling Harbour area at the 36 kilometre mark. Harbourside, beautiful precinct, fantastic dining venues, plenty of entertainment of course as well and uh, just a great spot to be able to come along. Bring the family if you're heading to Sydney. Get along and enjoy some of that. There's some great monuments and statues and fountains and things like that that are almost interactive. The kids can have plenty of fun at Darling Harbour. It's a quick check across there, wasn't it, to uh, see where everybody was. Kunyunga I don't think was in sight so I'm sure he's quite happy with where he is at the moment, Kip Rotic. Of course, the Blackmoors Sydney Running Festival is indeed a complete festival, and there is something for everyone, including the family fun run. Three and a half kilometres, Milson's Point to start, and look at this. Across the bridge you come, with all the kids in tow, there's prams and people and lots going on there. It finishes at the uh, Royal Botanic Gardens there, and look at some, there's our next generation, maybe, of marathon runners coming through with the Blackmoors family run. They've all got them, the watchers ready to go. There's some serious young boys and girls as a part of the, uh, the run. 3.5 kilometres, over 8,000 entries, it's terrific. Watch them go. Once that gun goes, they'll be off, <laughs> let me tell you. They will. It's uh, every man, woman and child for themselves because they are very serious about this. Some of the, uh, the youngsters, the teenagers, some of them not even teenagers as well. And they're off. It's a charge. It really is a charge. The light brigade. I bet mum and dads have said to me, you get to the front of that race and you go hard. <laughs> and that's exactly what they're doing. There is no prize for the first 100 <laughs> metres, is there? Surely. No. Three and a half oh. kilometres, over 8,000 entries. Absolutely brilliant. And what a great occasion for them to be able to again run across the Harbour Bridge and to be able to really enjoy that. And, uh, a lot of them waving to the cameras uh, and enjoying it. Dad full of energy there. He may not be in another three k's time. Who knows? My sort of distance that three k. And we can see that look, that's families there walking across, pushing prams. This is what it's about. It's about bringing people in and enjoying the day. It really is fantastic. Yes. Now, if you're thinking about it, get your entries in for. The 3.5, you can have 10, you can have 21, or if you really want to, you can do the 42 as it's well. It's a stepping stone, isn't it? Mm. This is, as you said earlier at the start, there all those little kids just lining up there, you know, tense, you know, really sort of waiting to go. They go into this, then there's the 10K maybe with another four or five years later on. And then if they want, and they progress to the half. And then if they're really serious, <laughs> really, really serious, they can go for the marathon. Or silly, as you would say, Steve, <laughs> wouldn't oh, you, I think? Oh, uh -huh. I'll leave that to Not you. Not anymore. I'll leave that to you, Steve. That's more in your department. Uh, yeah. I think Steve Avet said that while he was rolling his eyes <laughs> in the commentary box here it's to say, nice. you're really serious? Well, we're, they, all the events are sold out. I think that 40,000, massive numbers. So congratulations to everyone participating today. 
Yes, marathon runners are sometimes questioned in their sanity, aren't they, Monas? They are, and I reckon Felix might be questioning it now. We're, this, we're hearing the gap is slightly closed. You can see down to 27 mm. seconds, and in sight there. You there might be right, Steve. We're not oh, done yet. Don't say that. You're not oh. saying that I'm right about marathon running. I can't no. believe it. I think Kunyunga is running well, but I think actually to say that Kip Rogers is also running well. That gap of, what, 27, 26 seconds. It's a big gap, it but is. That's nothing, though, over the final stages of marathon. That yeah. could change very Maybe. quickly. So we need to really pay attention to the the look of, of the legs. And here we're seeing third place. And this is getting more into... Uh, still running on OK, but no no, no real I thought of winning the race. I think you can see that Sasaki is, is accepting where he is in the race. I think he's accepting he's third. He's just going to tick it through to the end. Yeah, I think you're right. That's a good one. Accepting, that's a nice word. I like your, your yeah. language, Steve. He's accepted his place at third, yeah. whereas we've got a race on up the front. Well, 24 you... seconds now. Yeah. Mm. Do you think, I'm looking at, I mean, you you read body language more than I do in marathon. Do you think that he's he's looking a little bit tired? No. Well, you can see the chaser now just on the uh, the white stripe of the road, so he will be able to eyeball the man that's, he's trying yeah, to run I down. Think, I think Kunyunga... Yeah, you can still see the guy in front. You can still see there's a possibility. So that must keep him going. I Remember still think, though, Steve, sorry to interrupt, but I think Felix will have to lose the race. Yes. I don't think I know, that, yes. That's right. that we're going to see a 25-second gap closed within this last few kilometres. But he's not giving up, though. He's not running for second, is he? No, he still has... Oh, in his mind, he still thinks he can run this race because in a marathon, as we keep harping on about, anything can happen in the last 10 or 15 minutes. Where we are right now, strange things happen. So he's still running, knowing that if he holds together and Felix falls apart, the victory is his. So Ken Junger is the man who is chasing, and this is our leader, Kipratich. And as uh, Steve Monaghetti said, maybe it is Kipratich's to lose. But we've watched that come from 30 seconds now down to 21 seconds between the leader and the chaser. And again, we might be able to see Ken Junger maybe can look down the road and see Kipratich ahead of him. Whose idea was it to put that, that chase thing up there? That's, that's make, it's worrying me. He's not worried, but I am in commentary because that gap is definitely closing. But in my mind, Felix much. still looks very relaxed, very comfortable. I, I'm trying to look at the head, Bob, and he's still pretty relaxed. Yeah, he he's moves still his relaxed. head a little bit, but he looks pretty relaxed to me. There's not much there's not much to go as well. That's what you look at as well, the actual time that he's or the distance he's got to try and close that gap. Yeah. He's within sight, you know, you're knowing that you're not far away now. He'll start, once they come round under the bridge and get a view of the Opera House, he knows he's in uh, mentally that's significant because you see the finish line. So they've come through the Barangaroo that's Reserve, great. transformed from a disused shipping container yard into one of Sydney's most stunning green oh, headlands right. as well. 75,000 native plants and 84 different species. So the Barangaroo area that they've just come through, absolutely brilliant. 24 seconds now, so that elastic band's just a bit movable at this stage between our leader, Kipratich, and also our chaser. And here he is. This is the man chasing the leader at the moment. So, Michael mm. Kanyuga, who's PB of 2.10.16, that, that's about the pace they're running. So this is a massive run. If he is closing, this could be, we could be in for some sort of finish here. Wouldn't we love to see a sprint finish? Oh, as you said, drama. Isn't, that's what yeah. marathon's about, isn't it? The drama, really. You never know what's going to happen until they cross that line. And how could they be, you know, at this 39 kilometre mark, 20, less than 20 seconds, split them? How do you mentally prepare for a sprint finish at the end of 42 kilometres? You don't train for that, <laughs> let me tell you. You just go hard. So this is our men's group at the moment, Barangaroo, and this is our women's leader. It looks like she's run past her designated water bottle, and that is certainly breaking the rhythm there, but having to go back and collect it, Stella Basocio, the Kenyan, the 26-year-old. So just a little bit of a mistake just running past that. Yeah, but still, that's good. I don't mind that because she's actually had the... the forethought. The, the forethought right. to actually go back and get it. So she's travelling pretty well because she's still got her wits about her to do that. You don't want it to happen, but she responded to that quite comfortably, didn't panic. And she's yeah. done the business and now back on her pace. Yeah, she looked good. I mean, to go back 
and to pick up and go again, I think in your mind, you know that you're, you're still good. You're still, you're still capable of running well. That's right, Steve. And, and she's back into her rhythm now and looks pretty strong. They've still got a little bit to go in the women. So we, you know, mm. there's still a bit of running yet for Stella Barsocio, but she, she looks pretty good. She gave our lead Australian, Dion Finicaro, windburn. <laughs> she went back <laughs> past Dion, who is, uh, of course, it is the Australian marathon title up for grabs as well. So all of the local prospects, while they may not finish on the podium in terms of the elite internationals, they are chasing that title, Steve. Oh, yes, indeed. And you only win it once a year, and not many people will say they're the Australian marathon champion, men or women. So How many of those have you got sitting on the mantelpiece? None, I don't think. Not that I know <laughs> of, to be honest. That's a good question. I only ever ran the one marathon in Australia, and that was the Sydney Olympic Games. So I'm assuming that means I've got none. I'm happy to say. I, guess. I think I'd remember if I had one or two. But um, no, they are an accolade that the runners out there today, and that's that race within a race. We're all out there running the marathon, but there are um, reasons to, to take note of where you're sitting, and those men and women will be chasing that Australian marathon title today. So this is our race in two. This is Michael Kenyunga, the Kenyan 32-year-old, who is currently at the moment 18 seconds behind our leader, Felix Kipritic, also of Kenya, the 31-year-old. So if it gets under 10 seconds, then I start yeah. saying that, you know, Michael can race to win, and it's not Felix's to lose, it's then Michael's to win. But at this point in time, I'm still thinking that it's Felix's race to I lose. I agree, I agree. But give him credit, though. Kanyunga really hasn't given up. He's decided that he's going to race right to the line. I mean, not normally at this stage, with about 2K to go, you think, OK, I'll just settle. Surely you would do, wouldn't you? If there's a gap of 20, 30 seconds, or would you say, mm. mm, I'll go for it? Yeah, uh, mentally, it's good if you can still be running on because it gives you a positive feel. Whereas if you sort of sit down on your haunches and be comfortable with where you are, it's a bit like the number of people who hit their watch or collapse when they cross the finish line. You've got to be mentally strong and you use all those positive vibes to just keep you going, to hold your form until you cross the finish line and then collapse, do whatever you want then. They're approaching uh, the MCA, Australia's leading museum dedicated to exhibiting, interpreting and collecting contemporary art from across Australia and also around the world. So while it's a great sporting venue, Sydney also a great cultural venue as well. 18 seconds is the break at the moment. Kipritic is our leader as they've travelled through the 40 kilometre mark. So two kilometres to go as they'll make their way through Circular Quay before getting here to the forecourt of the Sydney Opera House. So from our vantage point, we can see they have turned. They've gone under the Harbour Bridge and they've turned. So they can see across to the Opera House. They can see the finish line. But for Felix, there's a lot of running just yet. They have to head in around that circular key area. But wow, we, we may... They're both under race record time. So they're running sub 2.11. So for... He still looks as if he's still going well, though, doesn't he? You know, he, I've got, I'm getting a couple of signs. His mouth open. Just, he, yeah, I, I reckon he is working harder than he... I obviously, he will be, so it's, we all are at this stage, but I just sense that he's not travelling quite as well as what he was a couple of kilometres ago. He doesn't have to. He's only got less than 2K to go now. Mm. He's 20 seconds, 23 seconds in front. The gap hasn't closed. It, it's, it, it did at one point. It went back again and it closed again. But I think he knows, perhaps in his own mind now, that he's got this. Yeah, and he's, you know... He's, Ran a lot of sub Can you go though? Look, is he tens. is he picking up the pace? I, no. This guy's so deceptive. He really is. You I can see a lot of the media here getting that iconic shot of the runners with the Harbour Bridge in the background. And those sort of shots resonate throughout the world. So Kenyunga, who is our chaser at the moment, that he can't seem to get it down under 15 seconds. No. So it's gone back out to 24. So he's got his work cut out for him at the moment. I think Felix still looks, he's still got good he has. bounce in those legs. Look at that left arm yeah, swinging. Yeah, and, that's, oh. that's almost like a sprint technique. He's, he's gone up a pace, he really has. Yep, he's he, looking across. I don't, surely not, surely he can't close 20 seconds in, a, in 1,500 metres almost. No, again, it really will need Felix to hit the wall and start really getting into that marathon survival shuffle. And we're not seeing any signs of that. And you know, we're within just over a kilometre of the finish now, so only only three or four minutes of running. So surely, I think we can we can say that um, Felix 
Kipritich could be race record and victory today. So circular key, they're coming past at the moment, the home of Sydney's major ferry terminal as well, and the icons of the Sydney Harbour Bridge and Sydney Opera House. The Opera House, of course, opened in 1973. Still host over 1,500 performances each year, opera, ballet, theatre and musicals at the famous Sydney Opera House. With just about a thousand metres to go for our leader. You can see the distance there, so he can eyeball him. I think it's all over. I mean, I was hoping, wasn't I? Hoping against hope that Kaninga would try and get his way back. But they're both running so well. They're both under probably race record. You can't ask for more than that. And this man has, has took it on by the scruff of the neck, some way back in the marathon and decided to make it his own. So I think he deserves perhaps the victory. Yes, and Kaninga, who will, I think, run a personal bet. So I think they're running closer now to 2.10 pace. So we're going to see race records broken. and. A famous name, you know, I think this shows the the level of the Sydney Blackmore Sydney Marathon that we have a runner of 2-5 quality, Felix Kipritich, running now to victory here that will put uh, further establish this as an international. And that's why it's an IWF gold label event. So 2-11-18 is the race record. That's what we're looking at and uh, a couple of minutes surely Surely that time is going to be a race from the record books now. So this is coming past the back end of Circular Key. The ferries leave to the right-hand side of this frame here. And he will duck back underneath the railway line and then along the famous promenades leading to the Sydney Harbour, uh, Sydney Opera House forecourt. And you can see the crowd starting to gather at the business end of proceedings and they're happy to see someone of such elite calibre take out uh, the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. So it's going to be hard to pick him back from here. No. And he may run under two. Let's get him under this 210. That is a massive barrier. I mean, that was that was um, a barrier we're trying to break here in Australia. Uh, Rob Degasella doing it in Brisbane. But, gee, that's very, very fast running. So let's get him under 210. I, I think yeah. he, he's, he's a good He's going to do it. So the crowd really starting to get involved and they will lift the 31-year-old Kenyan. The Harbour Bridge in the background. Runners that have completed the journey, family and friends. And you can see our chaser there just behind in the red and the blue. I think that's a long distance shot. It's further than it looks, but it's certainly been game running by Michael Kunyuga. So Felix Kipritich has a look over the shoulder and you can see Michael Kenyunga, the 32-year-old from Kenya, our marshal saying to some of the other 10-kilometre runners, just move Come over on. to the side. 25 seconds, he's going to be tight. I reckon we've got him. Come on, <laughs> kicking home. I've got him under 210. He's got yes. yep. uh, He's home. This will be our winner. Felix Kipritich takes out the 2019 Blackmoors Marathon. A wonderful run from the 31-year-old Kenyan and continuing the African dominance of this event. Well done to Felix Kipritich. Well, the, uh, the score that, uh, sorry, the scorecard there was about 2951 unofficial. So that's a fantastic run. Smashed the record. So race record win to Felix Kipritich and Michael Kenyunga as well, posting a personal best time, Michael Kenyunga. Massive running there, fantastic. So having said they can't negative split, I think they may have, and they've smashed that race record. Fantastic run at home. This is another great run, really, from Sasaki of Japan. He held that third place all the way through the last, what, 10K or more. Always in that lead pack, and outside his personal best but he'd be really happy and again the Japanese have responded and good result here got a great history in marathon running and here at Sydney Marathon as well so this is our third place getter Satoru Sasaki of Japan the 33 year old another great run on his own as I say the last 10k or more having to work really hard to sustain that wow that's an historic day Incredible. That's that's just. Do not underestimate how 
terrific a run that was by. As you said earlier, Gibbert. this is not an easy course. No. This is not an easy course. There's too many twists, there's so many turns. It goes up, it goes down. And this man's a 2-5 best runner at, in a flat race, in a flat race. So yeah. to run this time in this course, I think that's a better performance, really. Yeah, it's great running. So a race record for Felix Kipritich, who takes out the Blackmoors Sydney Running Festival. What a terrific result under 2.10 here at Sydney on a Sunday morning. So we saw Reedy talk to us about uh, the water and the environmental effects and all the packaging and everything else like that. Certainly the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival, Pont 3, Athletics Australia, Destination New South Wales, everyone on board with making it as environmental as possible as well. Asocio now coming through on her own. This is the race leader in the women's beautiful style. Was the pre-race favourite. She has done nothing wrong at all. She's run everything, every single part of the race perfectly in terms of speed, distance and rhythm. Are we seeing record pace here, Monas? We well? are, yep. So we're we're hearing 225, which is well under. That's almost a kilometre under race record pace. So three minutes under that 228.06 pace. And still got to hold together and looking the watch, checking the watch. But we know she will certainly be, that will be front of mind for her. She's probably, again, can only lose the race now, but she'll be keen to keep rolling on to get that well under that race record. Stella Vasocio. 26-year-old from Kenya. We're talking about style. Look at that style. Hardly any knee lift at all. It's all very economical. This is what I'm saying about this, this course, twisting and turning. Again, another twist and turn. When your legs are tired, this really takes its toll. It really does. It breaks up the rhythm, changes your whole sort of aspect. But if you've got to keep going, you just got to keep going. It does. We don't like it, but it's a beautiful part of the course, and you just test your rhythm a little bit. You try and get around those little niggly bends and get back onto race rhythm as quick as you can. So Barangaroo Reserve making your way through there. Beautiful part of Sydney, man-made. It's been reclaimed, and now it looks an absolute treat. I think we're seeing the gap there, 1 minute 23 back to Chalchisa. Um, a long way back, obviously, in second place. So this shows to show the, the calibre of performance of Barsocio, really. So Barsocio, number 12, working her way through to the Sydney Opera House forecourt. Still looking pretty relaxed, going around the runner there and running on, holding that pace. And this is this is world-class women's yeah. distance running. And good thing about class. where she is at the moment is she is catching people just in front. So she's got a target sometimes just in front of her as the other athletes are slowing down as she's coming past. And located on the shores of Sydney Harbour, Taronga Zoo is an animal sanctuary in the heart of the city. Take a ferry to Taronga, hop on the Sky Safari cable car, a special feature of the zoo, an aerial view right over Sydney Harbour. 4,000 animals in there as well. Here is our winner though, and Felix Kipritich doing it in a race record time. Just a dominant performance by Felix Kipritich. Yeah, the pre-race favourite, still got to deliver on the day though, and whilst that's a little bit outside his personal best, that is under race record and very, very fast running. We've only seen sub-210 marathons in Australia very irregularly, so that's a big result and great result for the event today. So race record has been run in the men's, we're chasing a race record in the women's as well. Stella Basosio is most likely to achieve that at the moment on the pace she's currently doing. Well and truly, Ian. She's well under. It really is just holding together now. And 
She looks very compact. She looks great. She's she's still full of running, so. She's a 2.23 marathon. This is this is a class woman. This is a world class. This when is, you finish this, this, second in the Rotterdam Marathon, one of the biggest yeah, marathons is, in the world, yeah. that's class. We're seeing class on the road here at Sydney in both the men's and women's. Exactly. Today. I mean, the, the actual fields this year, I think, have, have been significantly higher in performance. Exceptional, yeah. yeah you really need have. to do that to get the gold label status. You need to have it. But you've still got to deliver and you've still got to entice these people. They only run a number of you know three or four marathons a year you've got to be have an event that will be encouraging enough to get them here and we're seeing that so well done to the organizers but and the runners are putting it on the line but each year this is this is improving each year yeah I mean and, and the history and the effort that's been put by these athletes will only enhance that yeah. and we've been working on this event and I, I looked at the fields leading in and I was excited about the caliber of the athletes because I, I certainly thought we can see two race records in this event this weekend, and today we've, we're seeing it delivered. So the expectation and the, the build-up that we've gained is, being, is actually what we're seeing out on the road. And the time of Kipritich, what does that mean in terms of the way marathons have been run in Australia? It's extraordinary, isn't it? Well, there's a big difference between anything in the 210s. You know, once you've broken the 210 barrier, that's significant for runners. They'll look at that time and say, well, it is a fast course. So yeah. that'll encourage them to make the effort to come out. So it's a beautiful course. We know now it's a fast course, yep. guaranteed. So we've traveled the 40 kilometers at the moment. And it looks like the last two is not going to be easy, you wouldn't suggest, for our leader at the moment, Stella Basosio. But you're adding, you know, even if we're conservative, 3.30, that's seven minutes for two kilometres. So you're 2.25, so that is three minutes. That's massive, massively under race record. And uh, 2.25, not far outside her personal best. That's, that's yeah. good Yeah, if run. you think that uh, Kip Rottich's time, a race record was good, This is if this woman carries on at this pace, this is a massive chunk of the record. That's right, yes. And we've seen this record come down. You know, it was 2.31 a couple of years, a few years ago, and then down to 2.28. So if she does hold this pace at 2.25, then that's six minutes that we've seen the record improve over the last um, few years, which is significant. Felix, Ki Felix Kipritich is downstairs, our race winner. I'm down here at the finish line with the men's marathon winner, Felix Kiprotic. How was it today, Felix? You broke the you broke the record by over 90 seconds. How was it? I feel good because I was when I was in Tatike, I think I can break the course record. That was that's my up in this marathon. Well done. So you started to pour on the pace at 30 kilometres and you and you sure did. You won by over 20 seconds as well. Well done today and, and good luck in your next race and for Tokyo next year. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Two-time Olympian Eloise Wellings downstairs doing our interviews and well done to Felix, a 31-year-old from Kenya and continuing the African dominance uh, of this race. Of this 11, 11 victories now. So. Well, African dominance, you know, around Full the stop. world. Yeah, yes. Full stop. Yep. I think we understand that, that and... Uh, yeah, they, take not... some, they take so much pride, don't they, in their, in their running. I oh, mean, they would expect to win yeah, today. That's that. I mean, exactly. that's not, that's, exactly. this isn't a surprise for him. He'd be delighted with the way he's run. But don't worry, he would have woken up this morning expecting to have that result. That's just a different mindset. Asocio on her own. This is the chaser, I think, as you said, Bill. Yeah. Almost, uh, well, nearly two minutes behind, just running her own race, really, all the way. Jep Kowicz. Jep Kowicz, yeah. Yeah, right she's now. still looking comfortable. So she's a 225 please. marathon runner as well, so, yeah, yeah they're but class this, at the top end of this. This is a class race, it really is, yeah, yeah. I keep saying it, but it's true. This this woman, if she produces this run today, in the, on this course, breaking the record by, well, say, almost a couple of minutes or so, that's, that's a, one of the best runs that I think I've seen for a women in marathon running for some time. Yeah, and we're not going to see a close finish. The reason is because they are running so fast. So exactly. We don't want a close finish when they're pushing the pace. And they've pushed the pace. They've been ahead of race record basically from the get-go. So this has been impressive running today. We talked about Ben St. Lawrence at the start. And he really put the pedal down right from the beginning as that pace setter. Has he helped create what's gone on here? 
Yeah, I think so. Otherwise, that pack may have just relaxed a little bit more and, you know, they would have had to do even more work. And there's only so much time you can pick up in the back end or hold. So certainly setting that up and Benny Saint was on them and encouraging them to keep rolling. So he can definitely feel like he's satisfied that he's helped uh, contribute to those to the record, certainly in the men's race today. So circular key and they will duck in and around and underneath the railway station at Circular Quay. The surrounding buildings at Circular Quay are come alive with vivid Sydney, the summer Southern Hemisphere's largest festival of lights, music, and certainly plenty of attractions and ideas with vivid Sydney. You can see Circular Quay right there, the ferry terminal, the famous Sydney ferry terminal of Circular Quay, and the runners will make their way around the waterline, then they'll head to the outside and then come back in through to the forecourt of the Sydney Opera House. So this is yeah. our leader in the women's, Stella Basosio. In the last one kilometre, and again, tried to get the, the men under 210. I think we'll see if we can get Stella under 225. She's running well, she really is. Beautiful style. Looking at a watch, she's been looking at a watch all the time. I'm not sure what she's checking or whether she just wants to see whether she's going to get under that record. She's not checking the kilometres anymore. No, she may be checking actual pace to see that she's not dropping because fatigue can be a funny thing and you think you're really slowing, but she may only be slowing a couple of seconds, but she'd be feeling like she's slowing a lot more and she wants to keep that pace uh, holding and, and still running on. That gap of two minutes back to Chepkowicz uh, stays the same. They're running about the same pace, these two women. But uh, having said that, it's, it's fast paced. So they're not going to close. They're not going to sort of lose too much gap, I don't think, there. So she will turn left in a moment, head back under the railway line, and then it will be along the promenade, some of the beautiful restaurants and dining establishments that uh, make their way out to the Sydney Opera House uh, and then along. And you can see that turn there underneath the railway line now. The crowd certainly giving her a big round of applause. And she'll be able to see the finish line. It will be beckoning. Yeah, she's checking her watch. She knows what the race record is, I'm sure, and she's checking her watch. Yes. She's so, seeing how far she is to go and what sort of time she... There she goes again. You don't run you don't run and win marathons too often, so I'm hoping she'll enjoy it. And, but you want to run as fast as you can because it, this could be one of her better days and you enjoy a good day in a marathon. Well, she's setting a record here, which may stand for a while. That's then she right. comes back next year and has another go at it, but this is a real performance. It really is. So Stella Basosio coming through the crowd at the moment. We can still see some finishes from the 10K. And it looks like the Australian Marathon title with Dion not behind, not far behind, uh, Monas. Looks like he'll take out the Australian Men's Marathon Championship. He's done a good job. Well on him. Sacrificed himself a little bit, I think, but doing well. What we can we? see, looking down from our vantage point, we're about to see Stella... Socio as she runs into the finish line, soaking up the atmosphere and taking the applause of the crowd. So she's currently at a 2.24. The race record is at 2.28. She's going to be smash well it. inside that. She's going to smash it by a considerable margin. She really is. It's going to be under 2.25 easily. So Stella Barsocio smashing the race record at the Blackmoors Sydney Running Festival in the marathon. What a time, a 2.24. The race record was 2.28. She has torn it apart and scorched around the course. And look at that smile on her face. She knows what a big run that is. She's delighted. She looks pretty good. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> she's laughing, she's laughing, but that was, a, uh, to, to, to act, put that into perspective, that's that's three minutes almost off the record. Three minutes, not just seconds, minutes off the record. Yeah. And she's come through, she's smiling, she knows she's done it, she looked at her watch. And that's an unbelievable performance, it really is. An unbelievable run from a world-class marathon runner. Chep Kowicz, no, she's still coming through. There's the crowd just cheering her on. She's run well in second place. This is another great run, really. Take that away from Barsocio. This is a, this is another world-class performance. Well, this might well be under the race record exactly. itself. So Chep Kowicz, the 30-year-old from Kenya, making her way to the forecourt of the Sydney Opera House. A terrific run as well. We're just coming up to 26 minutes now, so she's got two minutes again to get under that 
last, or oh well, the previous record, I should say, because it's been smashed already. Mm. She looks in pretty good shape. She's, she's holding together, so we're seeing some good finishes. Then haven't really shown that tiredness, that fatigue that we talk about hitting the wall. They've prepared well and delivered. What a wonderful vista to arrive at after 42 kilometres. And this is our second place getter. Not sure about the vista. I, I think you, you, the vista I want to see is the finishing tape. <laughs> <laughs> the scenery is less important when you're just uh, on autopilot getting across to the end. But look, this is going to be under the race record as well. Yeah, this would be almost uh, another minute and a half under the record. So this is for second place, wearing the nine, Josephine Chipcoach, and a terrific effort as well, a 2.26 for her. Magnificent run, and as you said, another 90 seconds underneath uh, the existing race record. Just looking at the other women coming through here, this is again, these, these athletes are running almost again at, at, at uh, the race record pace. Yep, that's... To Jita Chalchissa there. Looking like that's going to be our third place. Get her in the women's event. Now she looked like she'd fallen off that original chase group very early. It was down to about five or six when she came off the back. So she's managed to run past a few to achieve this podium position. Yeah, she's ran on really well. Again, Steve, she's, I think she's going to be gonna, tight on that race record. I think close to that again. She'll just be outside it. Maybe, but what a run, though, from the women. Yeah. Great to have the crowd involved. Oh. Terrific to hear the cheers and applause. So many people getting down to uh, the Sydney Opera House area to cheer on our international competitors and also plenty cheering on mums and dads and, and some boyfriends of them who and girlfriends competed and, earlier yep. and now are staying around to watch the race cheer their friends and family home and a lot of running groups come down there's squads obviously that compete as well so just a great festival atmosphere and well done to blackmores the 16th year of the being the naming rights sponsorship and that's our third place getter in the women's event Wow. So, they've really done this proud. Is it? Yeah, just yeah. outside that old race record. So it shows the quality of the women's field. So, well, well done to everyone who's managed to get across and well done to Destination New South Wales, the strategic partner, the event receiving the IAAF gold status, putting it on the same level as London, New York and Boston, iconic marathons. We'll try and hear from our winners if we can. You can see Elo Eloise Wellings is downstairs as well. The Harbour Bridge in at the background. And there is our winner. Congratulations to Stella Pasocio taking out the women's Blackmore's Sydney Running Festival Marathon. Well, the day has certainly been turned on weather-wise, no doubt about that. Conditions great. I don't think we've ever had bad conditions here in the, in, the, in, the, in the Sydney Running Festival. It's been fantastic, and I think it's produced the results that we all expected, but uh, kudos to, to everybody there that's been involved with this event today. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, certainly Lardy and the team at Pond3, they, they, and the, the, the city and the state have supported, trying to entice it, make it a very pretty event, but also beautiful scenery, but fast, and so credit to the the organisers who have closed down parts of the city to mm -hmm. allow us to enjoy getting out on the roads today. There's a spectacle of the, of the bridge there and uh, just seeing the, the watercraft going backwards and forwards. I wonder if they've managed to take up some of the uh, action that's been going on on land, but having said that, it's been something quite special, really. It's a run for the ages, certainly some very fast times that, well, you know, the, the records now are, are in a position that you know you need to have 
some special runners to come along to break them. So it's put them into another level now. That's right. I think this sort of times now, as you said, it, when people look at that and they see the winning time of both the men and the women's, they're going to say, right, I can't go there without being in super shape. Yes. I can't go and tackle those records. I can't, I can't win this race unless I am a world-class athlete in a world-class form. Yeah, that's right. And that's when you will see that, that you'd look at the history of the event and you might have been able to come and, you know, maybe have had a few marathons under your belt, but not anymore. You need to be fresh and ready to go because of the quality fields. And those times are now you need to be at the top of your game to, to achieve them. I think it's, it's justified its gold medal award by the IAAF, I think, over and over again in, in the last two or three years now. Yeah, and you, you have to continue to produce to hold that gold label status. So I think we'll be, those results today will certainly have enhanced that. Mustn't forget, though, that it, it has been, and looking out of our window now, although we're seeing the scenes of the Harbour Bridge and the Sydney Opera, looking at our window at the Commons, there are thousands and thousands of people still coming in, still coming in from all of the other events that's been going on. Yeah, and that's what, what you will get with um, 40,000 participants. So our winner in the women's, Stella Basosio, smashing the race record in imperious style. And you could see the big smile. She knew she was on race record pace. She'd been monitoring the watch and making sure, but minutes underneath, minutes, not just by seconds, but by minutes. So absolutely brilliant. So we can see Eloise Welling there sitting on the podium as our winners came in and we might be able to head downstairs as well. And Eloise has been doing a terrific job for this morning here as part of the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. All right, and with female winner of the mar women's marathon, Stella Basocio, how was that for you? How was the race? How did the race go for you? You were saying that you felt like you could win at 28 kilometres. The race was good, but when we started, it was cold for me. But after five kilometres, I feel good, and I enjoyed the race. The best, mag the best mega was good, and when I was in 28 kilometres, I see I'm in good condition, and I start pushing. Amazing! And you got the, the race record by four minutes. I'm so happy. Well done. We hope to see you back here next year. Yes. When you welcome me, I'll be back next year again. You are always welcome. Thank you. Looks like she wouldn't blow a candle out. Oh. That's one of the more controlled runs we've seen, even though it was such a, a tremendous pace, but certainly a controlled run. And we can see Cecile Cooper there uh, presenting the medals, and that's our third place getter there from Japan. Yep. So, Saturo Sasaki. Third place. And Second then. place, Michael Kenyunga. Cecile Cooper, our Director of Corporate Affairs at Blackmoors. And there is our winner, Felix Kiprotic, the 31 year old from Kenya, in a race record time. So that is our one, two, and three. Up they go. Oh, it's always hard work getting on. You, you want to be on the dais, but it can be hard on aching legs, tired legs. Sasaki in third position. And then Kenyunga in second in the blue and right in the middle. Kiprotech, Felix Kiprotech. A fantastic run and a race record time that he now owns. Nice medals. I'll treasure those medals. Little medals for a lot of effort, but a lot of those medals people wear around for a few days. Work. Here, have a look at the times at 2.09.49. So sub 2.10 for Kiprotech. And then Kenyunga just over the 210 in there as well. And we've got in position eight our Australian Marathons champion. I think maybe in seventh. Maybe Seven, our actually. Size Bain, I think, um, who's a, a Queensland rep, might have just snuck ahead of Dion Finicario there. And Alex Matthews, I think they might be our three Australian marathon medalists. We saw so much of Dion, of course, with uh, well, I running think he, with the elite uh, women. I think he sacrificed women. himself, actually, by helping the women go as, as far as he did. He really did. So good luck good luck and good uh, performance from him, really, to get second place just behind there in uh, in the, our Australian Championships. 
So well done to uh, Dion and uh, to everyone who's been a part of it as we continue to see our bridge runners making their way over. That's a 10-kilometre event. Record numbers again, nearly 40,000 competitors. Look at that. There you go. The Opera House on the Sydney Harbour Bridge. It doesn't get any better than that. And here is our women's presentation. So Cecile Cooper again on hand and a record time that was absolutely smashed, not only by first place, but second place was also under the race record as well. Yes, incredible running. So Stella Basosio. And for her, the 26-year-old from Kenya, has run a 2.23 in the past, but this one was a record time. Three minutes under the race record. Great effort. A 2.23 in Rotterdam, as Steve said, flat course, flat fast course, everybody knows that. But to come here and run this sort of time in these conditions is unbelievable. Yes, that's, uh, she's smiling for a good reason. That's um, Whilst it's not a personal best, so I think she would be thinking it's as good as that run in Rotterdam because it's, it's a victory and it's a challenging day in course, so she's done well. So well done to Stella. Of course, we should thank the nearly 1,500 volunteers that are also a big part of it as well. The Blackmores volunteers delivering water and everything else as well. But here's our result, 2.24.33. Yep, staggering, really. Kachowicz also under that record. Kenya again showing what they can do if given the chance. Beautiful running. And Chelchisa was third in 2.28.22, so she did really well to get back onto the podium after being dropped a little bit earlier. And uh, the Sydney Opera House, the forecourt, plenty of people catching up with one another as well, because sometimes on those runs it's like, all right, well, you're travelling OK, you go, I'll hold back, and then you've got to try and find each other at the end as well. So there's our winners. Winners are grinners. <laughs> <laughs> so I say, and they've enjoyed their work, that's for sure. You've always got to take a snap, haven't you? You've always, you've always got to get the selfie organised, especially when you win. <laughs> so, Sydney Running Festival, the hashtag you need if you're posting anything on the socials as well. And, of course, while we're looking at Hyde Park at the moment, the beaches in and around Sydney are just extraordinary. And who knows, maybe a great place to go and rehab might be Bondi Beach. With golden sands, the deep blue ocean and perfect waves for surfing and swimming, it's no wonder Bondi is one of the world's most famous beaches. It's one of Sydney's most popular beaches for swimming, surfing, promenading and people watching. The waves here suit all levels of experience. Only 20 minutes from Sydney's city centre. There's a wide array of bars, cafes, restaurants and accommodation nearby making Bondi the perfect summer getaway. Have a look at that absolutely brilliant and bondi beach one of the great beaches to uh, head along to you're looking at the sydney opera house at the moment no explanation needed there an iconic venue known throughout the globe and this race now with a race record especially in the women's side of things absolute world caliber and we know it's already a gold label event and in the men's side the record also being uh, taken apart so some wonderful runs and these are some of our finishes in the 10 kilometer event nearly 40,000 competitors and there is our men's winner and our women's winner and they are happy with their work Thumbs up. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Two records. That's wow. a money shot with the bridge in the yeah, background. Yeah, that's perfect. Perfect. So some of them ambling across. This is the family uh, walk or run. You can take the prams. You can go and do all that. But you do get to get across the Sydney Harbour Bridge. So if you haven't already done it, get along to the Blackmoors Sydney Running Festival. Luna Park, the famous face, and right on the water underneath the bridge. You can get the ferry across there from Circular Quay. Plenty of people will be doing that this afternoon. You can see a lot of the medals being worn by our competitors. And each competitor will be receiving one of those medals. Absolutely brilliant, nearly 40,000 competitors. 
they're the ones you wear as long as you can over the suit, <laughs> over the shirt, <laughs> over the dress, over the jacket, over anything for as long as you can. How long is too long? That's the question we're often asked as marathon runners to wear your medal and show off. I suppose it, it will tarnish after a while. <laughs> you've, still, you've still got yours on, have you? I have, that's right, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Where's your gold medal, your Olympic gold medal, Steve uh, Ovette? Everybody asks me, I don't know. I th it is somewhere in the house, I'm sure. I, I don't know. It was last taken for show and tell about six years ago, I think, one of my offspring took it, show and tell. After that, it disappeared. It literally, I don't know where it is. We just had a bit of a scare at home as well with the, with the bushfires, and I, and I rushed out. And someone said, "Did you take your medal with you?" I said, "No, sorry, that was, I was I was less worried about that than I was other things." So I was out in the way before that was uh, taken into account. Yeah, and you know you won it, Steve, don't you? So I think I did. You, yes, yeah. you're forgetting. <laughs> but do you need? You don't need the medal to prove it. It's Look, nice evidence. I, I, I always think. Fine. I always say to people, it's not about what they hang around your neck after. It's the event. It's it's the actual experience that matters. It yeah. really does. Yeah. It's nice to have some. But after that, look, this is what it's all about. This isn't about yeah. winning gold medals. This is about taking part. This is what running is all about. This, this is, is experience. This Holding is the festival. Hands, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what you want to see. You see. can't always win, you know, that's what, but you can take part. Yep. Thumbs up. All ages, sizes, everyone out there being a part of this. And it is. The weather's shined on us today. It's really nice out on course. So some personal best, but more importantly, some great... Big, just great experiences just enjoying this event and that's a part of it really isn't it the fact that destination new south wales blackmore's athletics australia they've opened up this beautiful city to be able to traverse and crisscross and make your way through it eventually finishing in and around the sydney opera house area and just what a wonderful occasion for everyone to be involved is. Doesn't matter age, size, whatever, there'll be something for you. And whether that's the family walk or the 10Ks or the 21Ks or indeed the marathon, if you'd like to take that on. And this is some of the beautiful area that you get to run around. Gee, look at that. Well, somewhere out there is your, is your son running he, the 10K and, done, and your yeah. wife. Got yeah, the news and your through. wife cozes out there somewhere doing it. <laughs> she They're doing is. all the hard work. We're just sitting here doing the commentary. Pretty easy, really. Well, I know the hydration process in the lead up to the event, and I don't think it was uh, performance enhancing. <laughs> Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. Set against the backdrop of Sydney Harbour, Sydney Opera House is one of the world's most distinctive buildings, attracting millions of visitors from all over the world each year, making it the perfect finish line for the Sydney Marathon. It was designed by Danish architect Jørn Utzon and opened in 1973 and is the youngest building to achieve World Heritage listing. This iconic piece of architecture is a multi-venue performing arts centre, hosting over 1,500 performances each year, including opera, ballet, theatre and musicals. And the acoustics inside that are extraordinary. The way they're designed, that the sound is absorbed or bounced around. It's a great venue to be able to go and watch any, any, anything. Play, <laughs> opera, drama, whatever. And not only doing our on-course interviews, but doing the voiceovers for us there, Eloise Wellings. Now there's Richard Coleman, our winner in the wheelchair. And uh, Richmond, we, uh, Richard, we know, has been terrific in terms of uh, representative for Australia over a long, long period of time. Gold medalist and uh, another one for Richard Coleman to add to his accolades. I think we're hearing Eliza Alt-Connell won the women's wheelchair event. Bronze medalist from Com Games last year up on the Gold Coast. So more runners starting to uh, come in. And this is where the inspiration sometimes happens, where people see someone and they think, next year I'm, I'm going to do that. Yep. I'm going to participate. I might start training or maybe not and, uh, and make sure that you get here and, and do it. But a lot of the people manning the barricades right now will be sensing that inspiration want to be on the inside of the barricades rather than the outside. If you want to Good enter, to sydneyrunningfestival.com.au, the 2020 Blackmore Sydney Running Festival. And if you enter now, 20% on the entry prices as well. sydneyrunningfestival.com.au. And they involved. all sold out. So if yeah, you want to get in, you've got to you yeah, get to it early. It's a sellout. But the, the other thing I think about, the wonderful thing about the Sydney Running Festival is that once you finish, there's so much else to do here. 
you know, we've been talking about the parks, we've been talking about the beaches, we've talked Opera House, you know, the ferries. Once you've sure. finished, you can have a holiday here and have a fabulous time. Mm. So that's something you've got to take into consideration when you're thinking about going for a destination marathon. Think about not only the marathon, but what you do before and after. I think I'm getting word through. My son Matthew finished the 10K in about 33.50, which is a personal best. So conditions must be nice out on course today. Now, are you a good coach or are you... How does... Oh, I'm, 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 okay. I'm a good coach. I'm not a great spectator when he's running. <laughs> I'll get a bit nervous, but um, no, he's enjoying his running and obviously there's a bit of pressure and expectation, but we love it. And I love running with together with my son. It's one aspect of running I never imagined. And we talk about that camaraderie and the experience and it's one thing you can do in running. And there's lots of stories of families out there today doing it. Well, luckily my son's a cyclist, so I'm never going to keep up with no. him running. <laughs> so uh, I've got, I'm, let off the, I'm let off the hook with that one. Record numbers, of course. The Blackmores family run 3.5 kilometres, and they too get to cross the beautiful Sydney Harbour Bridge. And you can see some of our bridge climbers uh, potentially up there at the moment. That is a wonderful thing to do if you come to Sydney Town. Get up and have a look there. And amazingly, it's made up of straight bits of metal. The girders are actually straight, but they give that arch, and you get up close and personal with uh, the bridge. Celebrating 85 years, along with Blackmores, the same birthday as well, 1932. To Blackmore's long-term sponsor of this event. But the uh, family fun run, 3.5 kilometres. Let's have a look at some of our finishers crossing there. And as we saw on the line, obviously a lot of them getting ready to go. They want to post a fast time. The Oof. kids are normally really, really good at it. And they scorch across the line, bragging rights up for grabs. And I think a lot of these kids will then try and say, OK, I'll take on the 21Ks next year and then I'll take on the 42. So what a terrific way to be able to elevate your running and your experience. The Blackmore's family run 3.5Ks and over 8,000 entries. Incredible numbers out here today. Lardy, fantastic improvement. I think we, to the organisers, there's been an increase of 7% overall up on entries this year. And, gee, I think in the... Um, in the marathon, a 20% increase. So, big improvement. So, people Sydney, are speaking with their feet. Sydneyrunningfestival.com.au, that's what you need to log on to. You can get involved, but get involved early because we know that nearly 40,000 competitors, and it's grown. Pont 3 have done a great job of growing it from about 12 or 13, maybe uh, 10 years ago, now to what it is. Absolutely brilliant. And we talk about the event, but it's the training and the lead up, the experiences and running socially, and the groups that are here today, and the charities that are raising those $2 million. So, it's all. That's, well, that's right. That's why you've got to get in early because if you start thinking about it a month or so you think oh i'm in great shape i'll do it i'll do a marathon i'll do the cinema it'd be too late mm. but the entries are gone yeah. you know so you've got to start thinking about that now let's start thinking about well i've just watched this on the television you know it's going out worldwide really this whole event is going out worldwide and people are watching is thinking oh, i wouldn't mind doing that they've got to start thinking about getting their entries in as soon as possible because this is a fantastic event it it's really a destination is. marathon yeah and that's what people that's what this event's grown to we're seeing fantastic times today, but also we're seeing a beautiful course and great weather. Now, the Kemia Foundation, of course, is one of the chosen charities as well, and everyone runs for different reasons. I'm with these two friends who have just finished the 10K. Girls, you're raising money for cancer. Yes, Carol's done amazingly well. She's had a really great year, and we're just doing it. Carol. Carol, you're a cancer survivor. How does it feel? to finish a 10 kilometer fun run with after being through. I seriously only finished chemo in March. Had a double mastectomy in April. And I'm only 37. Amazing. You would be such an inspiration to everybody watching at home who's going through a similar thing and um, well done today. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Well, there you go. If you're lying off the couch at home and you're thinking, maybe I'll have a go at it, that's the sort of inspiration that is a part of the nearly 40,000 runners that compete here. As I said, everyone runs it for a different reason, but those two women, magnificent. Yeah. There's the stories that are behind this event. 
So the point is, get up and off the couch because there's probably plenty of uh, people in uh, Sunday mornings just reclining and in enjoying it. Maybe after a big Saturday night, who knows? In 12 months' time, you might be here and competing as well. And uh, we know there are so many different stories. There are so many different people involved. We can see competitors that have finished coming back to maybe cheer someone on and uh, look... There is literally a million stories uh, a part of this Blackmore Sydney running festival, including plenty of mums and dads. Hi, Karen's just finished the marathon. How did you go to today, Karen? Uh, really good. It was only the 10K, it's not the marathon, but really good, yeah. Sorry, oh, the 10K. Well done. Thank you, you got three kids at home. You must be an inspiration to them. Uh, yeah, two of them are here running as well. I think they beat me. They'll be waiting somewhere for me, but it's good to run together. Well, I hope they've got a drink for you. Yeah, cool. Well done. Thank you. Our Olympian Eloise Welling's doing a great job downstairs as well, and people flood over the finish line. It's so good, and sometimes they come over arm in arm, hand in hand. Other times they'll try and post the same time. Sometimes there's a little bit of niggle and the shoulders get moved and someone wants to win by a second or two. But uh, yeah. what a magnificent, magnificent look at that. venue. I mean, look at that. People sitting down on the Opera House steps watching everybody come in. Fantastic. I'm still waiting for some of the, um, what is it, Bucket Man to come in. The man that's running with a bucket on his head or there's the uh, was it, Kung Fu guys are coming through at some stage. They're all in it as well somewhere there in amongst all this. So a fantastic day for everybody, really. So we've had race records. We've oh, here comes Guinness one. There's one of the records. fairies coming through. Right. <laughs> We've had the Guinness Book of World Records on board as well. But what a terrific after or what a terrific afternoon ahead for these people and a great morning of running we have seen. So that just about does us from here at the Sydney Opera House. A terrific event again. Successfully run, beautifully run by Pont 3. We thank Destination New South Wales as well for their ongoing support. Terrific to be part of an IAAF gold status event alongside London, New York and Boston as well. Blackmore's the long-term sponsorship and uh, it's just been a terrific event. Blackmore's have been on for nearly two decades now and of course this is a legacy event from the Sydney 2000 Olympics. My name's Ian Cohen on behalf of Steve Monaghetti, Steve Ovet, Eloise Wellings as well. Fantastic work by Felix Kipritich who took out the men's and Stella Barsose who took out the women's and they ran it in record pace. Have a look at the jubilation that is happening here. Brilliant results. And when you're looking at it in terms of a race record time, both the men and the women posting it in race record time. An extraordinary event. Steve Monaghetti, it's been brilliant. Thanks for being along on a Sunday morning. A, a, a terrific day, fantastic running. It was good to be involved. Thanks, Ian. Thanks, Steve. And Steve Avet, great to have you along as well. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, what a day. What a day, really, for athletics and for everybody here. So, plenty of smiles, plenty of celebrations. We do thank Blackmores for their ongoing support. And it doesn't matter what age you are, there is something for everyone. You can even come along and wear the dinosaur suit if you want to. Have a think about it for next year. Sydneyrunningfestival.com.au. That's the address you need to get involved. And you can do 3.5Ks, you can do 10Ks, or indeed you can do the 21K half marathon. And you can do it in a wheelchair as well if you would like to. So well done to everyone who's been a part of it. We've enjoyed your company from Sydney. It's now time to say a very good morning from the Blackmore Sydney Running Festival.